Chapter 2351 Breaking the Door While Han Sin was staring at the Geno Hall, the black crystal armor inside his sea of souls suddenly released a mysterious substance. It wrapped around Han's sound, covering him completely. After that, Hansen couldn't even detect his own presence. It was as if he didn't exist. Hansen quickly thought back to the time with Kong Fei. When the Geno Hall appeared previously, the Black Crystal Armor did something similar to this. Is the Black Crystal Armor connected to the Geno Hall? Or is it simply afraid of the Geno Hall? While Hansen pondered this, he heard Ancient Water God roaring to the sky. I have the name Water God. I am the Alpha of Water. I am going to become the Water God Spirit, and no one can stop me. When Ancient Water God roared to the sky, the water that had been suppressed by the Geno Hall began flowing toward him again. It was like a bunch of stars amassing an Ancient Water God's body. As the additional water strengthened him, Ancient Water God's body grew powerful enough to tear the fabric of space into shreds. His enormous form rose, heading for the Geno Hall. Hansen stared up blankly. Ancient Water God's power must have been practically endless to have reached such a high level. His body was unimaginably large, and it drowned the nearby planets as it moved. Seawater was the only thing visible in any direction. Hansen looked to the sky and saw that even the sky had been overtaken by water. And yet somehow, above that ocean, the mysterious Geno Hall was still visible. Ancient God is scary, Hansen thought with trepidation. He had seen many deified elites since coming to the Geno universe, but this was the first time he had ever seen destructive power on such a massive scale. If ancient water god wanted to kill, he could destroy an entire system within the space of a second. No living creature could block that sort of power. Shows looked up with wide eyes, and she said, Ancient gods are born deified, and their lifespan is a billion years. Few creatures can ever hope to rival the ancient god in this universe. Boom. A loud noise boomed above them, forming massive waves on the surface of the hovering water. Then, a heavy rain was unleashed. A shockwave rolled out from the water, shaking the mountains as it brushed their peaks. Hansen and Shows were blasted away by the scary shockwave that had been released. It was as if they were struggling against the rush of a tsunami, but their efforts were futile. They were tossed aside like ants. Pang! Hansen's body hit a mountainside, and the peak collapsed. Blood trickled from Hansen's mouth. He used all his power to repel the force, but he couldn't hold back the overwhelming shockwave. He couldn't even stand up straight. Boom. Another shockwave rolled across the sky, and lots of heavy rain followed in its wake. The rain slammed down like a tsunami, shoving Hansen back even further. As the blows slammed into Hansen and damaged his organs, they triggered the King Geese. Shining gold symbols appeared across Hansen's flesh, making him far stronger. Hansen regained his feet against the force pressing down on him. Shios hit the bottom of the sea and was pressed into the mud with the dying ocean creatures. She was about to be buried inside a crevice that appeared in the bedrock. Hansen frowned. He broke through the tsunami-like shockwave and raced next to Shios to pull her out of the crevice in the sea. He grabbed Shios and looked up into the sky. The turmoil and heavy rain that followed obscured his vision, casting the entire planet into chaos. He couldn't see anything. Ancient water god was still roaring above him and he heard the sounds of big waves hitting space. The impact seemed strong enough to make the stars themselves rattle and shake. Countless mountains were crumbling under the onslaught. This level of power was far beyond what Hansen could comprehend. With the protection of the Kingis, Hansen barely managed to stay upright in the storm. He stood atop a big rock, looking up at the sky. He wanted to know what ancient water god was doing, but he couldn't see past the wall of rain. Shios was close to becoming a king, but she could only hide in the shelter provided by Han Sin's stalwart body. She held onto him tightly to avoid getting pulled into the bottom of the sea again. The whole universe appeared to be shaking under that tumultuous sea. Ancient Water God's voice resounded throughout the universe with deafening volume. Hansen couldn't see the actual battle, but he could hear an ancient Water God's roar that the creature was fighting. It sounded like the ancient God was putting everything he had into the fight. Ping. Suddenly, Hansen heard a strange sound, like a stone door grinding open. A light shone through the air. That light beamed through the water above, cutting clean through all of the chaos. Hansen had been nearly blind earlier, but now he could clearly see through the storm. That light didn't seem to be at full strength, though. It was as if someone had pushed open a door to let the light of a flickering candlestick seep out. The Geno Hall's door has opened. 
The water kept smacking Hansen in the face, but he was still able to see what was happening clearly. That light was coming from the Geno Hall's door, which had been pushed open a little. I am a god spirit, and no one can stop me. Ancient water god kept roaring. His enormous body was trying to force its way into the gap of the Geno Hall's door. Did he succeed? With the purple eye butterfly running in his right eye, Hansen was staring at the Geno Hall's door. He didn't know exactly how someone became a god spirit, but judging from what ancient water god was doing, Hansen could guess that the ancient god was making his way into the Geno Hall. Perhaps if he entered the hall, he would become a god spirit. A thousand races had lanterns there, but they were just lanterns. Entering the Geno Hall as an individual was a different matter. Only a race's Geno lantern could reside in the hall. Now, ancient water god was trying to force his body into the Geno Hall. He wanted to go in, but it wasn't clear what would happen if he succeeded. The enormous body pressed against the door, waves continually slamming into its surface. The water was going to rush into the hall at any second. But suddenly, Hansen saw a hand emerge from the gap of the ajar Geno Hall door. That hand was so beautiful. The moment the hand emerged from beyond that gap, it pressed against ancient water god's body and drove him back. Then the hand vanished behind the door again. The Geno Hall's door shut. The sea hung above them, perfectly still, and the storm stopped. The door was closed, and the light was gone. Hansen was now unable to see the Geno Hall. All he could see was that blue sea that had taken over the sky. The next second, a red dye began to spread through the water. It opened like a flower. In moments, the water in the sky had become a sea of blood. With a boom, the bloody sea collapsed. A rain of blood poured down, covering everything in crimson. Chapter 2352 Ancient God Origin A creature that terrifying lives in the Geno Hall? Hansen felt a chill prickle his skin. The hideously powerful ancient water god had been killed by little more than a slap. The black crystal armor's behavior worried Hansen, but he tried not to let it show. The armor was probably connected to the creature inside the Geno Hall, he surmised. If the armor was discovered, Hansen could not fathom the consequences he might have to endure. The ancient water god had been killed by a single blow. Hansen would be annihilated by a small fraction of that force. He would probably be crushed into jelly. The ancient water god's blood rained down on everything around them. The blood rushed into the sea, giving the dying creatures another chance at life. The oceans filled in once more, albeit in a bloodier hue. Hansen noticed the green growth as small plants spread across the nearby rocks, and he allowed the blood rain to fall on him. The rain soaked his clothes, and it felt like life force was falling directly onto his skin. He also detected traces of the ancient water god's presence. It was quite faint, however. Most of the creatures on that planet were primitive, with only a few xenogeneics among them. With the blood rain's nourishment, though, the ordinary creatures started to change. Their genes were upgraded, and they evolved into lower-class xenogeneics immediately. Although they were at the bottom of the food chain, they had been given the opportunity to grow. Ancient water god failed, after all? Shio sighed. That result was actually expected. Many elites from the ancient god, very high and extreme king had failed in the past. Where is the ancient god origin? Hansen searched through the rain. He couldn't see anything that might resemble an ancient god origin. Shio said, ancient water god leaked the news about his own attempt to ascend. He wanted to attract water element elites so that if he failed, one of those elites could carry on with his ancient god origin. He must have selected someone before he tried to ascend. The ancient god origin will most likely be inside the person or creature he selected. Perhaps in a few hundred years, there will be a new ancient water god. Hansen nodded. He didn't think he stood a chance. Given how badly he had p asterisk set off ancient water god, he was lucky the ancient god hadn't killed him. It was unlikely he'd be given the ancient god origin. As Hansen was deep in thought, something fell from the sky in the blood rain. It began to curve as it fell heading directly toward them like a meteor. Hansen was shocked. The wall of water came to a standstill directly before Hans Senator it turned into a water tornado that danced around him in a slow circle. The ancient god origin. Shows whispered hoarsely. Hansen stared at it in shock. Despite the grudge between him and ancient water god, the deified had actually given him the ancient god origin. It didn't seem possible. The water flew around Hansen a few times taking a shape that vaguely resembled a dragon. 
It spoke to Hansen quietly, then went to rest in his right hand. Hansen opened his hand as the water drop fell into his palm. It became a water orb that looked rather like an egg. It solidified pretty quickly, turning into a perfect crystal orb. The crystal orb had a watery pattern on it. As the orb touched Hansen's skin, his original Water King body reacted. The original Water King body had previously been affected by the Kingese, but now it was erupting like a volcano under the vibrations of the crystal orb. Hansen was so happy. If the mere vibrations of the ancient god Origin could help his original Water King body, then Crystal Orb was even stronger than Hansen had realized. If he could eat it, perhaps the original Water King body could level up. Because Hansen had used the Blood Pulse Sutra to refine the original Water King body, it didn't consume any of his energy. Thus, the original Water King body would remain at the first tier of King class, which was as far as Bai E had developed it. It would be incredibly difficult for Hansen to level it up further. But the crystal orb's power blended into the original Water King body, and under that power, the original Water King body had a bit of a breakthrough. Hansen didn't have time to explore all the potential uses of the water orb, for he soon saw a few shadows headed his way. They must have belonged to the people and creatures in the vicinity. They had seen the ancient god origin descend in that direction, so they had come looking for it. Hansen hit his crystal orb, but it was too late. The shadows were approaching rapidly, and after they saw Hansen, they swooped in to attack him without saying a word. The King Class Elite leading the charge activated his water area around Hansen, then sent a slap toward him. The attack was nowhere near the power displayed by Ancient Water God, but it was enough to throw up some tumultuous waves. The other attacking elites also possessed water powers. Elites who had affinities to other elements wouldn't benefit very much from the Ancient God origin. Hansen coldly grunted. He activated his original Water King body, instantly releasing his own King area. He threw a punch towards the King class elite. The two King areas collided, and the attacker's third tier area was suppressed by Hansen's first tier area. The rival King area cracked immediately. Ping. Hansen broke the enemy's King area, then thrust his hand forward, driving it right through the enemy King's chest. They were both using water powers but normal king-class elites lacked the bodies of the extreme king. The other elites coming to attack Hansen stopped, shocked by his violent display of strength. They pulled back slightly, not daring to come any closer. If they wouldn't come to him, then Hansen would go to them instead. He cut down three kings in under a second. People were as infuriated as they were shocked. The original water king body is too strong, shouted a voice. But as everyone else ran away, Hansen saw someone emerging from the blood rain. They were holding an umbrella, and they exuded a smothering sense of pressure that was now bearing down on Hans Sr. Thousand Chance Umbrella. It's the pirate's nine-headed bird, someone screamed out loud. Hansen focused his gaze on the newcomer, turning his back on the elites who were now running away. The newcomer moved with deceptive slowness. At least a hundred miles separated the person from Hansen, but the newcomer crossed that distance in only a few steps. Their umbrella was raised. They looked at Hansen and smiled. When Hansen saw the person's face, he could tell it was a very ordinary one. But while the slender face was unremarkable, the eyes were beautiful. They were like two crescent moons. Hansen didn't know anything about this nine-headed bird, but Hansen could tell that they were king-class from the energy they were emitting. They might have even been half-deified. The nine-headed bird stopped. They looked at Hansen through the blood rain and smiled. Prince 16 by E, am I correct? You know it is me, and you still dare to approach? You are brave, Hansen growled. We pirates have never lacked guts. The nine-headed bird stopped smiling, and their expression became unreadable. So, leave your ancient god origin behind and get lost. Either that, or I'll have to call King Bai to come pick up your dead body. Chapter 2353, Nine-Headed Bird Ridiculous, Hansen shouted, pretending to be angry. He used his king area to cover nine-headed bird. The water area shrouded Nine-Headed Bird, turning into a rain of water that restricted Nine-Headed Bird's body. Nine-Headed Bird didn't move. He stood still with the umbrella open, and he allowed Hansen's water area to restrict his body. Why haven't you moved? Hansen asked with a frown. I am afraid, Nine-Headed Bird said coldly. Afraid of what? Hansen asked. I am afraid my strikes will be too fast, and you will be killed too soon. It isn't like I am afraid of the Extreme King. 
You're nothing more than a nuisance, nine-headed bird said in a calm voice. Hansen laughed and said, in this world, everything has a cost. If you ever find something that is truly free, please let me know. You are right. Although pirates are never at a disadvantage, it's rare to find something as valuable as that orb. I might not ever find anything like it again. I'm not afraid of going to some trouble to obtain the ancient god origin. Nine-headed bird smiled darkly. His sword light lit up, cutting through Hans Sin's king area immediately. The sword light surrounded his body, holding back Hans Sin's water area. You are half deified. Hansen looked at him. Nine-headed bird approached Hansen, striding through Hans Sin's king area as if it was nothing. An ominous sword light glowed from his umbrella as he got close to Hans Sr. I am half deified, and you only have a first-tier king area. You might think that I will hesitate to bully someone so weak, but we pirates are not afraid of looking like the bad guys, Nine-headed bird said. He closed the umbrella and thrust it towards Hansen like a rapier. The sword light looked rather simple on the surface, but there was a hidden sword mind in the strike. It hid the strike's true depth. Hansen used his original water king body and his body became water. He shot toward Nine-Headed Bird like a water dragon. Hansen was driving toward Nine-Headed Bird's body. Nine-Headed Bird's umbrella, which looked like a sword, suddenly opened again. Hansen's watery form slammed into it. Ping. Hansen was thrown back. His water body returned to a humanoid shape and he was about to leap toward Nine-Headed Bird again when a sword light came down on him. The strike had been perfectly hidden, and Hansen didn't see it until it crushed his body. The water that had composed Hansen's body shivered, trying to gather itself up again, but something was keeping it from drawing together. Because of this, it remained spread in puddles, shaking and twitching. Nine-Headed Bird lifted his umbrella and smiled. My split-day sword light can't destroy your original Water King body but I can keep your body from drawing together again. It might not kill you, but it can seal you for 10,000 years. Prince 16, you should just give me the ancient god origin. That will save us both the trouble. As he finished his threat, Nine-Headed Bird suddenly frowned. Hansen's water had begun shining gold. Every drop of water had a gold kingis flickering inside it. Catcha. Countless water drops regathered, and the hidden sword light that had suppressed Hansen was now crushed. The shape of a human reformed in front of Nine-Headed Bird. Nine-Headed Bird squinted at Hansen in surprise. Your body contains that much King Geese? How did you do that? Hansen didn't speak. The King Geese of his body were quivering. His bones were roaring and shaking. He punched towards Nine-Headed Bird. When he punched, although there was no power in the thrust, he had the support of the ground and the sky. Everything in that world was shaking under the weight of the King Geese. He got a quiet response. Nine-Headed Bird's face turned grim. He put away his umbrella and gathered up his sword mind. The sword was aimed at Hansen's fist. He struck, but at first, there was no sword light. Ping. As the two strikes collided, gold light and sword lights went everywhere. Countless sword lights fell like rain toward Hansen, sometimes making it all the way to his skin before the Kingis would flicker and ping them away. The fist and the umbrella ground against each other. The powerful half deified was sent flying away under the force of Hansen's punch. His umbrella was bent backwards like a bowl. Incredible power surged through Hansen's legs, and he chased after the arc of nine-headed bird, still throwing punches as he went. Hansen's attacks were like sea waves, getting heavier and heavier. The power of each punch was stronger than the last. When Hansen had seen ancient water god shocking water power, he had immediately realized that he could combine it with the Extreme King's Shocking Sky Punch. Nine-Headed Bird's face changed. He kept trying to dodge away from the string of attacks, but no matter how unexpectedly he tried to move, the world answered to the beck and call of the Kingis rattling inside Hansen's body. Nine-Headed Bird couldn't escape now that Hansen had locked onto him. Ping, ping, ping. The fist and the umbrella kept coming against each other in the sky. In just a few punches, the king-class item was broken under Hansen's fist. SH asterisk T. Shouldn't you have called that the battle god king body? This is so F asterisk king ridiculous. Nine-headed bird kept shouting as he fought. He was a half-deified being, but he was using every ounce of his power to hold off Hans Senator, and still, Hansen had him at a severe disadvantage. His bones were cracking, and it sounded like they were going to snap. Shows and the others were watching the two fight in the sky. 
as she watched the gold shadow slowly beating the SH asterisk T out of nine-headed bird, she was very surprised. No wonder the Extreme King are one of the top three races. Nine-headed bird of the pirate is very strong, but he still cannot go against someone with the blood of the Extreme King. That king area, at its first tier, is suppressing the half-deified nine-headed bird. The Extreme King are scary. Nine-headed bird, upon hearing these comments, became furious. He knew that Hansen was much weaker than him, but the Kingis powering Hansen's body were simply too powerful. The whole universe and all its creatures were answering to Hans Senator as every punch was combined with the power of the sky and the ground. It was enough to surpass Nine-Headed Bird's own power. Nine-Headed Bird was punched in the face. He was sent flying away again, sputtering in anger. F asterisk CKU. If I don't attack with everything I have, you'll think I'm nothing more than a house cat. Time to show you that I'm a tiger. He shook his arms, and a black light glowed out of his body. His arms became black wings as his body began to swell. He became a disturbing black bird. The weird bird looked like a dark cloud with nine heads. The eyes had gold lights within them, and its claws carried clouds. When the bird flapped his wings, wind and fire were summoned. It rose overhead like some demon of the apocalypse. As Hansen's punches rolled across the sky like waves, the nine-headed bird released a strange, vibrating scream. That sound could break stone and the sky seemed to tear under the weight of the voice. The bird's talons fell to intercept Hansen's fist. Ping. The fist and the talons collided with each other, but this time, it was Hansen who was blown backward. The nine-headed bird flapped its wings and dove after him. The bird kept screeching weirdly, its eyes like thunder. Hansen prepared to move forward and attack again, but the nine-headed bird just hovered in the air. All nine of its heads were making strange sounds, like a demon mumbling. As the mumbled chant continued, a weird black area covered the region. Chapter 2354, Suppressed Demon Coffin Hansen walked toward the nine-headed bird. Darkness flowed from the creature, consuming all that could be seen in every direction. Hansen knew that the darkness was coming for him, that it would trap his body in less than a second. Ping! Hansen hit the darkness, but it was like he was striking a plate of steel. The impact made his hand go numb and the wall of black around him remained unmoved. The darkness seemed to solidify into walls of flat stone. It enveloped the entire area around Hansen, trapping him inside a small box. Hansen kept punching the black stone around him, his kingis continuing to shine. But even so, the black stone didn't break. Dark demonic symbols began to appear across the surface of the stone. The sky above has a bird of nine heads, and hell below holds the suppressing demon coffin. No matter how strong your Kingi's body is, you cannot escape the binding area of my demon coffin. Nine-headed bird's voice sounded in Hansen's ear. Hansen examined the demonic symbols across the stone. One of them looked rather like a bird's head, and it turned and squawked at him. Shios and the other observers saw the black coffin close around Hans Senator. The pitch black coffin was disturbing to look at, and a nine-headed bird stood on its lid. Each of the bird's nine heads looked off in a different direction and it kept the coffin suppressed. A demonic air swirled around the coffin, and no matter how Hansen tried to attack, the demon coffin would not budge. Hansen's fist kept striking, but he couldn't break through the suppressing field of the demon coffin. The demonic symbols flashed across the coffin's interior, and a bird had appeared again. The weird bird eyes stared at Hansen, and the creature chuckled. Don't waste your breath. My suppressed demon coffin can bind both gods and demons. Even if a deified was in your place, they wouldn't be able to break out of this coffin. You can hand over the ancient god origin now. If you don't, and the suppressed demon coffin falls into the demonic abyss, even I won't be able to help you out. Hansen ignored the bird. He kept punching against the suppressed demon coffin, but it was proving to be futile. Hansen's power slammed uselessly into the demon coffin's walls. There was a power, like an abyssal one, absorbing his strikes. He was unable to hurt the demon coffin. Hansen summoned his purple eye butterfly. He had a look at the demon coffin, and he learned that the demon coffin wasn't a solid item. Instead, it was being continually formed and fueled by power coming from the demonic abyss. It was connected to that abyssal and demonic world. Furthermore, the coffin was now slowly falling into that place of darkness. The suppressed demon coffin's demonic air had grown strong, continually replenished by the streams of darkness coming from the bird's nine heads. The eyes of the fiend were unleashing a demon light, 
which seemed to be making a path for the demon coffin. The demon coffin was slowly descending into the dark as tentacles made from a dark substance pulled it down. Just as Nine-Headed Bird had said, not even a deified would be able to escape once they fell into that dark abyss. Prince 16, you are so talented. You also have the protection of the King Geese. You could achieve so much. Why throw away your life for the ancient god origin? You will live a long and good life, surrounded by many beautiful women. You will reign over all of the extreme king. Dying is not worth it, said the bird's head in a tempting tone. It had emerged from the coffin walls again. Hansen found it annoying, so he punched it. The bird's head vanished back into the coffin, and Hansen's power was absorbed by the stone walls. Hansen's head spun with thoughts. This demon coffin area is so weird. I'm afraid ordinary power cannot break it. The Kingis are strong, but they are still combined with my flesh, which means I cannot control them. I cannot cast the Kingis beyond my skin. Relying on the power of the Kingis to break the demon coffin's area will be pointless. Nine-headed bird, if I go into the demonic abyss, this item will be useless for you, too. You will lose the ancient god origin, and you will also become an enemy of the extreme king. Do you want to be killed? Hansen said. Others might be afraid of you and the extreme king, but we pirates are not. You should just hand me the ancient god origin while you're ahead. Otherwise, you're going to be buried in the demonic abyss. Extreme king or not, it does not matter to me. Nine-headed bird laughed sinisterly. Hansen didn't move, and he said, unless the very high were supporting you, the pirates wouldn't dare to go against the extreme king by themselves. You need to think about this. I'm carrying thousands of king geese. I'm a genius unlike any the extreme king have ever had. Father really loves me. If you bury me in the demonic abyss, what do you think my father will do? Do you think the very high will fight the whole of the extreme king on your behalf? Nine-headed bird went quiet, then hissed, Do not talk crap. Give me your ancient god origin if you want to live. Otherwise, even if king by himself came here, you would still die in the demonic abyss. I'm very bad-tempered. I only respond to the nice cop. Trying to intimidate me like this will never make me hand over the ancient god origin, no matter how dire my circumstances might be. Hansen paused and then said, But if you want to make a wager with me, and I lose, I will give you the ancient god origin. Nine-headed bird frowned and asked, What are you proposing? You have used the suppressed demon coffin to trap me. This is nothing. You and I stand here without dodging. You punch me, and I punch you. Whoever moves first loses. That will test the real metal of a man. If I lose, I will give you the ancient god origin, Hansen said. Nine-headed bird's eyes flashed. He gave Hansen a look of scorn and said, You have the King Gi's body, which makes you stronger than my half-deified body. Why would I agree to this wager? I won't use the power of the King Gi's. If I use the King Gi's power, I also lose, Hansen said. Are you serious? Nine-headed bird's eyes flashed. He was staring at Han Sen as he spoke. I promise in King Bai's good name. If I break my promise, then King Bai will die, Hansen said. When Nine-Headed Bird heard Hansen use King Bai's name to make the promise, he believed him. He still harbored some suspicion, though. I'm willing to make this gamble, but I will have to hit you first. If you move or use your King Geese, then you lose. Sure, Hansen answered quickly. Nine-Headed Bird Hearing Hansen answer him so quickly, grew even more suspicious. After a moment of thought, he said, we can only use our own power to fight. We cannot make use of xenogenic treasures. Hansen's face paled slightly. He cocked an eyebrow and said, isn't it normal to make use of xenogenic treasures? Nine-headed bird grinned widely. Using xenogenic treasures is worse than using king areas. You don't like my suppressed demon coffin area, yet you insist on xenogenic treasures? About that, Hansen's face still looked worried. Hurry up and make your decision. The suppressed demon coffin is on the verge of falling into the demonic abyss. If you do not decide now, then you won't be able to turn back. Nine-headed bird laughed again. Sure, I agree, but I will have to take the first swing. Hansen could see that the suppressed demon coffin was teetering on the edge of the demonic abyss, and it made him grit his teeth. No, I will hit first, nine-headed bird replied instantly. Hansen's face kept changing, and he didn't speak. A scary demonic air had made its way inside the suppressed demon coffin. The coffin warped, and the tentacle-like strand of demonic power was feeling its way forward, coming for Hans Sr. Fine. We agree, then. Hansen screamed when he saw the dark, 
demonic tentacle reaching out lecherously to touch him. He he, that is it, then. Nine-headed bird snickered. The suppressed demon coffin then opened and Hansen emerged. Suppressed demon coffin was consumed by darkness as the black tentacles surged up around it and pulled it down into the black. Chapter 2355, Dragon Beast Soul Hansen floated down until his feet rested on the surface of the water. He had no plans to escape. He looked at Nine-Headed Bird and said, I will remain standing here. You can use whatever sort of power you wish, and if my feet cause any ripples in the water, then I forfeit and lose. When Nine-Headed Bird heard Hans Sin's declaration, he drifted down to the sea's surface as well. His bird with nine heads appearance returned to something human-like again. He smiled and said, As I should have expected from a prince of the extreme king, you are true to your word. I don't know if you pirates are trustworthy, but the extreme king are, Hansen coldly said. Nine-headed bird smiled and said, There is no need to try to provoke me. If you keep your end of the bargain, I will not break the rules. Good. You strike first. Hansen stood atop the sea, unmoving. Sure. I'll strike first, Nine-headed bird said, but he continued looking at Hansen without attacking. Nine-headed bird was certain that he could defeat Hansen as long as the Kingis were not a factor. Making Hansen move would be easy. But Hansen was a prince of the extreme king, so Nine-headed bird knew better than to attack carelessly. He considered the best way to move Hansen from his spot. What? You still haven't attacked? Is a half-deified being terrified of me? Hansen laughed. Nine-headed bird lifted his lips in a sneer. Didn't I tell you? Trying to provoke me won't work. After that, Nine-Headed Bird looked at Hansen and thought to himself, his original Water King body cannot be destroyed. Even if I completely wreck his upper body, his legs might remain untouched. No matter how powerful my hit is, it's not guaranteed that I can move his feet. Thinking of that, Nine-Headed Bird had an idea. He prepared to strike. Hang on. Hansen suddenly raised his hand to stop the man. What? Are you regretting our agreement? Nine-Headed Bird stared at Hans Sr. Hansen laughed. I have nothing to regret, but before you strike, we should discuss our deal. What game are you trying to play now? We already established the terms of our bargain. You give me the ancient god origin if you lose. It's that simple. Nine-Headed Bird frowned. I will relinquish the ancient god origin if I lose. But what if you lose? If we don't sort out that aspect of the bargain, you might keep trying to take my ancient god origin after you lose. I have no protection here, Hansen said. If I lose, I won't try to take the ancient god origin again. Even if you threw it on the ground before me, I wouldn't dare to pick it up, Nine-Headed Bird said. Awesome. Come on, then. Hansen activated his original Water King body, and his entire body became translucent. He stood atop the sea as if he was connected to it. So you were planning to use the original Water King body to win. That was a poor choice. Nine-Headed Bird coldly honked. He raised his hand, and a black demonic air gathered in front of his fist. It formed a ceaselessly swirling black hole. Beezy's T. Nine-Headed Bird punched toward Hansen, and space itself trembled around his fist. The black hole moved directly toward Hansen, and its frightening power tugged on everything around it. Hansen was still some distance from the black hole, but it was already pulling at him. His water body shook, as if the water of his form could break away and be sucked into the black hole at any time. Nine-Headed Bird's attack didn't strike Hansen's body directly. Rather than being intended as a destructive attack, it was meant to affect Hansen's balance. Its magnetic force would keep pulling until Hansen's body was sucked inside. Because Nine-Headed Bird had greater power, Hansen's body would be drawn in by the black hole. There was no way he could lose. Hansen barely seemed to notice the black hole, though. He remained motionless atop the water. He was not moving into the black hole. Nine-Headed Bird frowned. His attack was better than any Hansen could unleash without using his Kingi's power. He should have been falling into the black hole. But Hansen wasn't moving. He wasn't using the Kingi's or some sort of xenogenic treasure, either. Nine-Headed Bird stared at Hansen in confusion. Hansen laughed. He had suggested this bet because he knew he would win. He wouldn't take this risk on a whim. Nine-Headed Bird couldn't see anything strange about Hansen's stance, but Hansen still could have used some sort of trick without his knowledge. Hansen had suggested this bet because he had the Silverwing Dragon Beast Soul. King-class Xenogeneic Beast Soul Silverwing Dragon. Area Type. Hansen didn't know if only King-class Beast Souls had an area of effect, but at that moment, 
it was the only Area B soul that he had. The Silverwing Dragon could deploy a water area, but it was different from Bai Yi's natural water area. This water area was called the Dragon Area. The Sea Dragon had the soul of the sea, so if Hansen used the Dragon Area in the water, he could become a part of the sea. His body melded with the sea itself. Hansen stood atop the sea, using the power of the sea to keep him erect. Although he couldn't control it with accuracy, he couldn't be moved unless nine-headed birds summoned enough power to shift the entire sea. A bar of iron might be easily moved, but if it was welded onto an aircraft carrier, no amount of pulling could force it to budge. Of course, a stick couldn't control an aircraft carrier, but merely remaining stable was enough for Han Sr. With the dragon area, standing atop the sea made Hansen effectively immortal. Nine-headed bird could do nothing to him. Nine-headed bird kept increasing the strength of his black hole, but he was unable to move Han Senator as eyes began to widen. Shows watched the contest, frozen in place. She had no idea how Hansen was pulling this off. Nine-headed bird, can you keep going? Hansen smiled. Nine-headed bird grunted coldly. He dismissed his black hole, then lowered his arms. He spoke to Hansen, come. If you can move me, then I lose. If I do not move, then I will attack again. We will decide the victor then. Then I will start, Hansen said, summoning his wings. He flapped his wings and flew far away. Nine-headed bird's eyes bulged. Hansen was about to disappear from his vision. He was so mad that he turned into the nine-headed demon bird again. He ran after Hansen and angrily shouted, Disgusting extreme king. Are you going to embarrass your father like that? You lose. Hansen stopped. He turned around and looked at nine-headed bird with a grin. What is this bullish asterisk T? Nine-headed bird slid to a stop. His face turned a sickly green as he realized he had just been tricked. He had lost because he chased after Han Senator he had fallen for the simplest of ploys. Chapter 2356 Back to the Extreme King Hansen had obviously planned this. Because Hansen let Nine-headed bird strike first, Nine-headed bird had a chance of winning. That was why Nine-headed bird agreed to the bet. But Hansen's dragon area defeated Nine-Headed Bird's first attack, and the moment he stopped attacking was the moment he sealed his loss. Can I go now? Hansen smiled at Nine-Headed Bird. Get lost. Do not let me see you ever again. Nine-Headed Bird's face was contorted with anger. Without waiting for Hansen to respond, he turned and flew away. Hansen was surprised. He hadn't expected Nine-Headed Bird to keep his promise, but it was a good thing he had. The dragon area's power came from its connection to water. If Hansen was sealed inside the suppressed demon coffin, he would lose his connection with the sea and get pulled into the demonic abyss. Unless Hansen used his super god spirit body, he wouldn't have been able to defeat Nine Headed Bird. Without any hesitation, Hansen flew up into the air and headed back to Half Star Bay. He didn't say another word to Shios. If Miss Mirror hadn't left yet, that was where she would be. Too many elites wanted to get their hands on the ancient god origin. Staying next to Miss Mirror would be the safest thing for Hansen, as it would prevent others from trying to take the item away from him. Although Hansen could probably escape, Bauer was still with the extreme king. So, Hansen felt obliged to remain. He flew for a few hundred meters, but suddenly, he felt the crackle of lightning all around him. A giant that looked like either a demon or a god hung there in the clouds. A hand came slapping down towards Hans Sr. The hand slowed down, and the air around Hansen concentrated until it was as dense as a steel board. Hansen couldn't tear through the air. He couldn't move his body. A deified elite. Hansen felt a chill, and he prepared to fight back. Just as he was about to lash out, a sword light appeared and slashed across the big hand. Arg. The giant in the clouds screamed and pulled his hand back. The godlike eyes looked down to where he had been struck. A beautiful woman holding a copper sword in her hands had emerged. Miss Mirror. Hansen was so happy. That giant stared at Miss Mirror, then disappeared. He seemed to be afraid of Miss Mirror, and he obviously didn't want to make an enemy out of her. I cannot believe ancient water god selected you. Miss Mirror came before Hansen and looked at the ancient god origin he was holding. Isn't that why you brought me here? Hansen said. I was just here to try my luck. I didn't place any hope in you, so I didn't expect you would succeed, Miss Mirror said simply. Hansen touched his nose and looked at the Blood Red Sea. Miss Mirror seemed to know what Hansen was thinking. In a neutral tone of voice, she said, Extreme King ships are here. 
They will take over the planets that were touched by ancient water god's blood. Miss Mirror hadn't come for the ancient god origin at all. She just wanted to claim the system that had been flooded with ancient water god's blood. After ancient water god's failure and the subsequent dispersal of his blood, the primitive creatures of these planets would now grow strong. Even barren planets would now flourish because of ancient water god's lifeblood. The watery area that came from ancient water god's blood had an incredible life force. It could grow many scary xenogeneics. This was exactly what the extreme king needed. On the flip side, the ancient god origin wasn't as important. It could only be used to grow one strong water element elite. It was nothing compared to the value of an entire system. Hansen followed Miss Mirror back to the ship, and he saw that the extreme king's ships were splitting up to guard the individual planets of the system. Hansen found the blood Kirin was on their ship, and he was surprised that it had sat and waited for him the entire time. It obviously wasn't the mindless beast Hansen had believed it to be. When the blood Kirin saw Miss Mirror, it looked hostile and scared. Hansen could guess why. Ancient Water God had moved Hansen far away, and the blood Kirin wouldn't listen to Miss Mirror's commands. She must have used some sort of trick to get the creature on board a ship. This woman is too tricky. I don't know what she wants. Why didn't she tell anyone else that I'm not actually by E? Hansen stroked the ring on his finger and thought to himself, it most likely has something to do with this ring. But she didn't force me to take the ring off. Why? Hansen didn't understand. He knew he would have to stop thinking about it. He brought out the xenogeneic gene of the silver-winged dragon and swallowed it to refine it. Duke gene plus one. Duke gene plus one. The Duke gene announcements kept sounding off in Hansen's head. He received ten Duke genes in total. If I can get a few more king-class xenogeneic genes, then I won't have to worry about the story of genes. Hansen was both happy and worried. Miss Mirror didn't remain on the planet for long. She had been needed during the takeover, but she wasn't in charge of building up the planet. Her task was finished before most of the Extreme King's ships even arrived. Hansen knew Miss Mirror had many elites around her, but they didn't appear in her proximity. Taking such an important system would be a bloody affair. The ancient god wouldn't give up the place easily, so both sides would make sacrifices in the attempt to claim the system. The price would be high whether they succeeded or failed. After going back to King's Kingdom, Hansen took the Blood Kirin with him back to Planet Water Zone. Miss Mirror didn't detain him, and she said nothing more to him. No one else sought to trouble him, either. That made Hansen even more worried, though. He didn't know what was going through Miss Mirror's head, and he had no idea what her ultimate goal was. I can just put Bauer back in the sanctuaries. That will be safer for both of us, Hansen thought in irritation. He would need to take Bauer back from Lan Haishin. Before Hansen could find Lan Haishin, though, she came looking for him. She looked fairly moody, too. Bai Yi, did you forget something? Lan Haishin found Hansen in the garden and looked at him with a raised eyebrow. She didn't say what she wanted explicitly because she was still suspicious about Hansen's identity. Last month, on the 9th. I remember. But Miss Mirror took me somewhere to do something. I had no choice, Hansen said with a shrug. He then thought to himself, it is fortunate I have Bauer as a spy. It is good that you remember. But since we missed it, we must now wait another two months. You better behave over the course of the next two months and stop giving me trouble. After Lan Haishin spoke, she left. She didn't even spare him a second glance. Chapter 2357 Killing Underwater Xenogeneics Because Han Sin was uncertain of Miss Mirror's ultimate goal, he didn't dare take any obvious risks. He remained on Planet Water Zone and spent his time hunting down Duke Xenogeneics. He wanted to fill up his Duke genes. Hansen found a few Duke Xenogeneics, killed them, and consumed their Duke genes. Their Xenogeneic genes increased his Duke gene tally by one point each, so leveling up was a very slow process. It wasn't as fast as eating one King Xenogeneic gene to claim ten Duke gene points. He didn't want to cause much of a ruckus. He needed to be patient and slowly trawl through Planet Water Zone in the hunt for Duke's Xenogeneics. What is this? Hansen came across a little mountain moving across the bottom of the sea. It slid forward at a very slow pace, but Hansen could tell that it really was moving. When Hansen rode the Blood Kirin down to get a better look, he realized that it wasn't actually a mountain. It was a conch. The shell was 100 meters tall. It was black and grayish, and it looked like stone from a distance. Beneath the cock, 
the white skirt of the conch was revealed. It was slowly flapping and moving across the sand. Feeling Hansen and the blood Karen draw near, the mountainous conch moved its flesh and released a blue light. It covered an area of 1,000 meters, cloaking Hansen and the blood Karen at the same time. The blood Karen was angered. His blood air exploded out from him as he thundered toward the sea conch. Hansen didn't know what the sea conch's area did. It didn't seem to affect Hansen directly. The blood Kieran soon came before the sea conch, though, with that blood air swirling all around him. The sea conch retreated back into its shell as the blood Kieran's claws skittered across the hard surface of the shell, leaving some scratch marks across it. The blood Kieran roared in fury. It kept swinging its claws at the conch, trying to break through the shell. But despite its strength, the blood Kieran couldn't leave behind anything more than light scratches. The conch shell was 100 meters tall, so those scratches were inconsequential. A king-class synogeneic? Hansen was delighted by this discovery. If its shell was that sturdy, the creature must have been king-class. A weak king-class, judging by its fleshy body, but a king-class nonetheless. The blood Kieran continued striking the shell, but each blow left less and less of a mark. It was rather confusing to Hans Sr. Hansen pulled out his ghost teeth knife and swiped across the shell. It did nothing, and his performance paled in comparison to the blood Kieran's. Hansen frowned. He pulled out his Thunder God Spike, summoned its lightning, then thrust it toward the sea conch's shell. He wanted to paralyze the beast. After that, he could flip it on its back and slay it from below. But the creature's shell seemed to insulate it perfectly from the lightning of the Thunder God Spike. That made Hansen raise an eyebrow. This guy's shell is really hard. But it is so big. I bet it would make an amazing armor. The shell was far too large to be used for a single set of armor. Still, it would make an excellent construction material for something larger. Before Hansen could make something out of it, though, he first had to kill it. He tried all sorts of different powers, but his strongest attack could only deliver a mark that was a few inches across. It had no effect on the sea conch. Let's flip it. Hansen called to the blood Kieran. Gathering their strength, they turned the sea conch over. After flipping it, though, they realized it was sealed on the bottom. There was no way in. The opening was blocked by the same material that composed the rest of the shell. As they looked over the creature again, Hansen and the Blood Kieran realized that the marks they had left on its shell had vanished. Their efforts had been wasted. This isn't right. This guy probably has a third tier area. How else could the conch shell be so hard? Even the Blood Kieran, with an attack at full power, only leaves a small mark. Hansen looked around at the blue lights of the area that was all around. How does this conch have such a powerful king area? They had been there for a long time, but the blue light hadn't done any damage to Hansen or the blood Kieran. It certainly wasn't meant as an attack. Is this a weakening area, perhaps? Hansen considered the possibility, but it didn't seem quite right. If it was a weakening area, he should have been able to feel his own power losing strength. Hansen wasn't sensing any energy drain. His body was full of vigor. If it isn't a weakening type, then could it be a cell-strengthening type? Does the blue light increase the shell's strength? Hansen stroked his jaw as he thought about this, but he ultimately discarded this idea as well. If it was a cell-strengthening area, the sea conch wouldn't have needed to release the light into such a large area. The wider the area, the more spread out the power would be. The cell-strengthening area would only be required around the shell itself. Why would the creature need to extend its reach so far? If it isn't a weakening or a cell-strengthening area, what is it? Hansen stared at the sea conch as he mulled over the conundrum. The blood Kieran had a short temper, and its inability to damage the sea conch's shell was making the blood Kieran more and more furious. It kept trying to bite the shell, but nothing worked. The marks they left were becoming lighter and lighter. Hang on. The blood Kieran's power hasn't weakened. In fact, his anger has made him even stronger. Why are his scratch marks becoming lighter? Hansen stared at the scratch marks on the conch shell. After a while, his eyes sparkled. Is his area power? Hansen swam next to the conch shell and stroked the scratch marks across its surface. The blood Kieran stopped attacking. Not long after, the scratch marks were gone. The healing unfolded before their eyes. If even a top-class half-deified creature like the Blood Kieran couldn't break the conch's shell, then the shell was unbelievably hard. Hansen didn't think that the strength was coming from the material of the shell, though. The conch's shell was very hard, but its incredible resistance was because of the creature's king area. 
Hansen didn't know if his guess was correct. So after a moment of thought, he took the blood Kirin and left. They departed the Sea Conk's area of blue light. The Sea Conk behaved as if it knew what they were doing. It spread the blue light further, but the max range was 2,000 meters. It couldn't extend the light beyond that. When Han Sin and the Blood Kirin got far enough away that the Sea Conk couldn't feel their presence, they hid behind a big rock. Han Sin used his purple eye butterfly to observe the Sea Conk in the distance. The Sea Conk waited there for a while. It must have been almost half an hour before the creature emerged from the shell to look around. After a while, when it didn't see Han Sin and the Blood Kirin in the vicinity, it shut off its blue light. Upon seeing that, Han Sin summoned Spell. He turned her into a sniper rifle and took aim at the sea cock. Ping. Without hesitation, Hansen squeezed the trigger. The bullet fired out of the barrel and broke through the water. It was silently headed for the sea cock. Chapter 2358, Weird Area Normal bullets would face too much resistance when fired underwater. The shot would become weaker the farther it had to travel, and the sea conch would likely notice its approach. But Hansen had his original Water King body and Sea Dragon area. He combined with the Sea of Planet Water Zone itself. He used his water powers to create spells ammunition, so the bullet also had water abilities. Rather than being slowed down by the water it passed through, the bullet was actually buffed by the sea. It flew toward the sea conch silently, like a phantom. But Hansen wasn't firing at the exposed flesh of the creature. He was firing at the conch shell. Ping. The bullet hit the sea conch shell, punching a small hole straight through. The sea conch shook and immediately activated its blue light. The light quickly covered the sea conch shell, protecting the small hole. So that's how it works. Hansen was happier. He looked at the bullet hole and noticed that some white juice was flowing out of it. Although the wound was very small, it proved that his bullets could pierce through the shell and damage the creature's body. Now Hansen knew for certain that the light made the conch shell so hard not the material of the conch shell itself. Han Sen's shot was far weaker than the Blood Kirin's attacks, too. But still, his bullets were able to penetrate the conch shell. The Blood Kirin's claws were only able to leave light scratch marks upon it. It was obvious by now that the difference was because of the blue light area. Han Sen stayed where he was and lifted his sniper rifle to aim at the sea conch again. He fired a few times, all of his bullets flying true and striking the shell. None of those bullets were able to break the conch shell, though. Under the glow of the blue light, they left small marks on the surface of the shell. When the bullets go through the blue area, they don't lose speed or power. But when they strike the conch shell, they don't have the impact that they should. Hansen looked at the sea conch with interest. After a while, the bullet hole Hansen had made filled in and disappeared completely. The conch's recovery power was very strong. No wonder by E left behind a king's energeneic. He probably couldn't figure out how to kill it. He didn't leave it alive because he wanted to. Hansen laughed. Since Bai Yi had been unable to kill it, this was a good opportunity for Hans Senator He and the Blood Kirin remained in hiding, and he was determined to kill the King Class Senegeneic. He only had guesses about how to bring the creature down, though. He didn't have a surefire way of breaking the blue light area, so he planned to wait there until the Sea Conk relaxed. The Sea Conk had learned from Hansen's previous attack and it didn't reveal itself so quickly this time. It took a few hours before the sea conch was willing to reveal its flesh once more. This time, however, it didn't deactivate its blue light. It continued using the blue area as it traveled into the deeper recesses of the sea. Hansen thought the thing would be heavy and slow, but it ran away like a rabbit. Hansen watched the small mountain flee into the deep sea, creating eddies and vortexes as it went. Hansen used his purple eye butterfly to keep an eye on the thing as he pursued it, waiting for the moment the creature decided to relax. Now that the sea conch had been damaged, it was being careful. It was moving fast, and it carefully maintained its king area the entire time. Hansen wasn't in a rush, though. He just continued to follow it. The creature was too big to hide from him easily. Plus, Hansen had two water areas. Escaping from him in the water would be practically impossible. Hansen was very confident in his water-aligned powers. But Hansen noticed that his current confidence had come a little too soon. When the sea conch passed by another underwater mountain, it disappeared. After it climbed behind the mountain, it didn't reemerge. Hansen thought it might have come back to its home, but when he looked around the mountain, he couldn't find the sea conch anywhere. Weird. Where did it go? Hansen looked around, but he saw no sign of the creature. 
The gap between the mountains was small, so there was nowhere else for it to go. The sea conch was too big for Hansen to have missed it if it came out. That was why Hansen waited near the mountain. But there was nothing to see. The sea conch had truly vanished. You think you can escape my sight that simply? You were too naive. Hansen used his purple eye butterfly and his Dongshan aura to scan for the sea conch's molecular trail. He found it and began following. Hansen quickly realized that there was a small hole in the ground near the mountain. The hole was the size of a man's fist. The sea conch's trail disappeared into it. The conch had tricked him. That sea conch can change its size? Why didn't it display that power earlier? Hansen wondered. Blood Kieran, go in and take a look at what it's doing. But don't alert it to your presence. Hansen wasn't very good at changing the size of his body, but the Blood Kieran was a professional. It could change its size effortlessly. The Blood Kieran roared. Its body shook as its bones shrank. It became one size smaller, and then it continued to reduce until the red beast looked like a little toy. Then, it climbed into the hole. Hansen waited on the outside. He looked around and examined the trench that led to the hole. Hansen had studied the Xianmen techniques left behind by Mr. White. He learned a few of the skills, but they were very simple. He only mastered a couple of their methods of calculation, but if a situation was quite simple, he could use those techniques to provide some insight. The underwater mountain was very special. There were many mountains nearby, and they were all connected together. The mountains were shaped like volcanoes with craters at the top, and there were large holes in the peaks. From above, the nine mountains looked like a chain of interlocking rings. Hansen remembered in the Xianmen technique that this kind of environment was called the Nine Rings. If that sort of landscape was in the Alliance, no one would have dared to live there. Such a place had a lot of bad luck, and people who chose to live there would suffer the consequences. But that theory might not have applied to the Geno universe. Mr. White said the Xianmen techniques required many improvements for the Geno universe. Techniques and powers were different in the sanctuary in the Geno universe, and he was interested in researching those differences. Hansen was checking out the mountain when a white shadow suddenly appeared from the peaks. It was a big electric eel that was a dozen meters long. As it swam, its white scales sparked with electricity. It looked weirdly pretty. Another king class Senegeneic. Hansen frowned. This was unexpected. Chapter 2359 Hunting King Class Senegeneics. As far as Hansen knew, by a cleared planet water zone a long time ago. Even Lan Haishin hadn't bothered sending out hunting parties. But now, Hansen had met two king class Xenogeneics in a row. Both were in the same vicinity, too. This posed a big problem. Pulling out his Thunder God spike, Hansen went towards the king class electric eel. Hansen didn't really care what change planet water zone was experiencing right now. He was just going to kill any king class creatures he found. Getting king class genes was good for him. He used his original water king body then unleashed his dragon area as well. Hansen moved like a water dragon as he rushed toward the big electric eel. The thunder god spike flickered with scary silver lightning, and the sound of thunder rumbled along its path. Hansen's king areas entangled the giant electric eel. The water restricted the eel's body, and the creature swam extremely slowly, as if it was moving through mud. While Hansen rejoiced at the success of his attack, the electric eel suddenly loosed a crackling discharge of lightning. The lightning created a scary thunder area and merged with Hansen's own area. The electricity shot through the water and into Hans Senator, his hair instantly poofed straight out and began vibrating with the force of the current. Ping. Hansen's electrified body bounced away. He came to a stop after arcing through the water for a long time. His tongue felt numb. A king area focused purely on attack is too scary. And that electricity has a strong paralytic effect. This is at least a sixth tier area. This electric eel will be hard to deal with. Hansen held still in an attempt to hide himself, but the electric eel was already rushing toward him. Its thunder area came with it, and streams of electric chains shot out of its mouth. Hansen used his water skills to dodge the thunder area and the lightning chains. Fortunately, he still had the benefits of his water areas. He moved much faster in the water than the electric eel did. If not for his speed advantage, he would have already taken more hits. That would have been extremely painful, even if his body could withstand it. After dodging out of the eel's immediate attack range, Hansen summoned Spell's dual pistols and started firing. It wasn't the seacock, 
so Hansen didn't have to worry too much about its blocking abilities. When the bullets entered the thunder area, the eel reacted immediately. It spewed more of that lightning to destroy the incoming bullets. But one or two of the bullets still managed to strike the eel's scales. Familiar symbols began to shine across the impacted scales, showing the results of Han Sen's turtle skill. The turtle skill took effect, and after a few more shots landed, the electric eel was much slower. However, the lightning on its body was still incredibly strong, and the creature's thunder area covered the surrounding region, so Hansen couldn't get close to the creature. Ping. Spell became a sniper rifle, and Hansen fired a bullet toward the electric eel. The bullet shattered the eel's scales and tore into its side. Purple teeth power spread across the wound. Hansen's techniques weren't king class yet, and his original water king body only had a first tier area. Taking down a king class Xenogeneic with a sixth tier area would be incredibly difficult. Luckily, the turtle skill worked well against the eel. Because of that, the foe was unable to catch up to Hans Senator, he led it to the seabed, firing continually at the creature. Teeth power continued to shred its wounds. As it lost more and more blood, the electric eel's area grew weaker. Xenogeneic King hunted, electric dragon. Xenogeneic Gene found. Hansen watched the giant electric eel's body sink while the announcement played in his head. It is a shame I didn't receive its beast soul. An electric beast soul would have been very powerful. Hansen swam over to the electric eel's body and dug out its xenogeneic gene. He summoned his shadow queen bee and let it eat the big electric eel's body. Shadow queen bee hadn't matured yet, and Hansen was already a duke. The queen bee wouldn't be useful to him at this point, but since he had the meat available, you might as well let her eat it. Otherwise, it would all be wasted. Shadow Queen Bee crawled over the body and ate with difficulty. Hansen swallowed the entire electrified bone that was the Xenogeneic gene. He also used his consumed talent to refine it with haste. A numb feeling swept over Hansen's body. It was like his cells were electrified, and they began to vibrate with energy. Duke Gene. Duke Gene. When Hansen finished refining the electric bone, his Duke Gene tally had reached 84. He was close to having 100. If I kill two more King Class Xenogeneics, I'll have maxed it out. And then, I can open the story of Gene's first gene lock. As Hansen was calculating, he heard a boom in the distance. Something tore its way out of the little hole under the mountain, dramatically widening the opening. The blood Karen emerged from the swirls of debris and returned to its ordinary size. Blood dripped from the blood Kirin's mouth, and grievous injuries marred its scales. It was in very bad condition. Padong. The blood Kirin made it back to Hansen, then fell onto its stomach on the seafloor. It struggled to get up. Wounds covered its legs, and one leg had been twisted 90 degrees. Black blood oozed around the wound. The black blood drifted into the water around the blood Kirin's body, then turned into some sort of small black bugs. They latched onto the blood Kirin and started nibbling on its wounds and scales. The blood Kirin was a cruel and violent beast, but now it was actually squealing. Hansen was shocked. The blood Kirin was a half deified xenogeneic that was nearly peerless, and judging from the way it had been injured, it had encountered something other than the seacock. The blood Kirin's blood continued to become bugs, and Hansen couldn't determine what sort of power had been used against his companion. Hansen was still holding the Thunder God spike and he poked it into the blood Kirin's wound. The black bugs began to shriek as Hansen electrified them, and after a minute, they all fell off the wound. Those bugs vanished, but the blood gushing from the blood Kirin's wounds was turning into more black bugs. If that continued, the blood Kirin's veins were going to run dry. Hansen looked at the little bugs, and he realized they were actually small sea conches. Hansen used his purple-eyed butterfly to see what was going on with the blood Kirin. Many small, Black sea conches were squirming around inside the blood Kirin. There were too many to count, and the sight of them made Hansen feel sick. At the rate that the blood Kirin's body was being devoured, it wouldn't be long until only its bones remained. Hansen wondered how he might save the blood Kirin, but then something else came crawling out of the hole that the blood Kirin had expanded. The newcomer's body swelled back to normal size. It was that same, King Class Seacock. Before Hansen could react, Another sea conch emerged from the hole. This one was beautiful and full of color. Its shell was like a crystal, and its colors shifted and glowed like a rainbow. When Hansen saw that beautiful sea conch, the color drained out of his face. Chapter 2360, 
rainbow crystal sea conch. Hansen knew with a single glance that he was looking at a deified creature. It was nothing like the black, mountainous sea conch. Hansen grabbed the blood kirin and turned to run, but it was too late. A rainbow-like aura covered the sea around him. Hansen felt like his body was stuck to the ground, and he was unable to move. Many rainbow-colored substance chains were rising through the water to bind him. D asterisk him in it. Why is there a deified creature here? This is bad. Hansen activated his super god spirit body without hesitation. His body immediately became transparent. He shone so brightly that the colorful substance chains heading toward Hansen suddenly lost their target. Rather than attempting to fight back, Hansen's first reaction was to lift the blood kirin and run away as fast as he could. Even the weakest deified would be more than a match for Han Sr. The rainbow crystal sea conch wasn't as powerful as ancient water god, but it still wasn't something Hansen could fight against. If Hansen became king class, perhaps there was a chance he could fight off a deified. But right now, Hansen was just a duke. He needed some outside help just to fight a half-deified being. Fighting a deified would be suicide. A half-deified was like an incredibly powerful king, but deifieds were on a different level entirely. The rainbow crystal sea conch saw Hansen traveling freely through its substance chains, and it rocked back in apparent shock. Its crystal body flashed, and the substance chains turned into rainbow-colored glass. The glass surged up around Hans Sr. Hansen poured all of his power into his super-god spirit body, running his technique as hard as he could. The weird power was injected into the blood kirin, and the blood kirin's body became similarly transparent. Under the force of Han Sin's will, the blood kirin's body also adopted the qualities of super god spirit mode. Hansen lifted the blood kirin higher and hit the rainbow glass. They shot through it like ghosts, the glass wisping around them as if it wasn't even there. The rainbow glass was unable to stop Han Sin and his super god spirit body, but the super god spirit body had a time limit. Hansen was carrying the blood kirin as he fled and that cost him even more energy. After they escaped the rainbow glass, Hansen ran back in the direction he had come. The rainbow crystal sea conch managed to catch up. Countless substance chains rose from the ground and continued their attempts to capture Hans' senator. He brushed right through them at first, but after a while, he was unable to sustain the power requirements of the super god spirit body. Every time he passed through the rainbow glass, it cost him a lot of energy. When Hansen hit the next pane of rainbow glass, he felt as if he had thrust himself into sticky liquid. It was difficult to wiggle his way through. Hansen knew that this was the sign that he was losing his super god spirit body. If this continued, his super god spirit body would entirely fail. He would be unable to break the substance chain glass with his power. What do I do? Do I have to jump into the sanctuary? If I go back to the sanctuary, the blood kirin will die, Hansen thought rapidly, but he couldn't come up with a solution to his predicament. The deified Xenogeneic speed would make escape virtually impossible. Hansen used all of his strength, but it was useless before that absolute power and speed. Super God Spirit Body's ability to make him invincible was the sole reason he hadn't been trapped. Hansen's heart was burning. He knew he could escape to the sanctuaries, but his greatest worry lay in the Blood Kirin. Hansen carried the Blood Kirin's bleeding body, and luckily, his super god spirit mode had lent some of its strength to the blood kirin. Hansen's power killed the small, black sea conches and made the blood kirin feel better. But now, the two large sea conches were still a serious problem. One was a king with a powerful king area, and the other was a genuine deified xenogeneic. Even if he used his super god spirit body to attack them, he wouldn't be able to save the blood kirin. In underwater town, Bauer was eating lunch with Lan Haishin. Halfway through her dessert, Bauer's face paled. She suddenly leaped off her chair. Bauer, what is it? Lan Haishin looked at Bauer with confusion. Stomachache. I have to go to the bathroom, Bauer said, then left the room with the little red bird in tow. This kid, Lan Haishin shook her head and smiled. She looked so happy. She had really come to love Bauer, and she even kept Bauer in her room with her at night. They were like real sisters. Bauer ran to the garden and bit her finger. She let a droplet of blood fall on the little red bird's forehead, and she said, Little red bird, my stupid father is in trouble. My blood will guide you to him. Go and save him. After that, Bauer threw the little red bird upward. The little red bird flapped its wings and became a red light. Then, it disappeared from the town. 
Hansen was still holding on, but his super god spirit body was flickering. It was almost gone, and it could disappear completely at any second. Hansen's body struck the rainbow glass again, and now it was as if he was striking leather. Hansen gritted his teeth and pushed forward, but he was squashed out. The super god spirit body couldn't hold on any longer. Hansen fell out of that mode and returned to being a human composed of ordinary flesh again. Hansen tried to use the super god spirit body's remaining power to attack the seacock, but it wasn't that useful. The super god spirit body buffed Hansen quite a bit. It could ignore the defenses of creatures and attack things directly. Even so, attacking a beast that was two levels above him was pointless. Ping. Another pane of rainbow glass fell. It was going to cover Hansen and the blood Kirin, and so Hansen tried punching it. His fist was lit by King Gies, but he was unable to fracture the rainbow glass. Hansen kept punching the glass, and the sounds of the blows echoed over the seafloor. Hansen's bones were about to break and his fists were bleeding, but he couldn't break the rainbow glass. The power of Super Spank struck the substance chains of the rainbow glass, but even that was bounced back. Super Spank could find a single link of the chain that was weak enough to break. The blood Kieran fell on the ground, looking to be in a really dire condition. It was still able to release horrid screams as it tried to struggle back to its feet and fight against the rainbow glass alongside Han Senator, but after a few tries, it collapsed again with blood spewing from its mouth. The Blackstone Sea Conch moved alongside the Rainbow Crystal Sea Conch. They were moving slowly. Two sea conches climbed atop the rainbow glass, looking at Hansen and the blood Kirin through its transparent surface. The black sea conch's eyes looked very human. They glared at Hansen with disdain. The rainbow crystal sea conch looked at Hansen with its dreamy eyes. And then, the rainbow glass surrounding Hansen began to shrink. It was squeezing Hansen and the blood Kirin together. Chapter 2361 Little Red Bird Shows Off the faces of Hansen and the Blood Kirin were squashed together. Hansen hesitated, trying to decide if he should take the Blood Kirin with him to the sanctuaries. Even if the powers of the sanctuary harmed the creature, it was better than being squeezed into a sausage then and there. The Rainbow Sea Conch didn't move. It kept pushing the glass down on Hansen and the Blood Kirin in a cruel bid to crush them. The Black Sea Conch was standing just outside the glass, and it seemed darkly amused. It moved around a little and small black things emerged from its shell. They were the black sea conches. Those small sea conches surrounded the glass like a tide of water. There was a countless number of them, and they looked like a cloud of ink. Hansen felt a chill as he looked at them. If the glass squashed into a pulp, he wouldn't feel safe dying. His dead body would be devoured by the hungry sea conches. As Hansen gritted his teeth and prepared to use his blood pulse sutra to return to the sanctuaries, a beautiful red light appeared above him shining down into the depths of the sea. After that, Hansen saw a burning flame swoop across the sea. It was like a fiery phoenix coming down from the heavens. The strange-looking red light was its flames. The Black Sea Conch and the Rainbow Crystal Sea Conch noticed the phoenix. The Black Sea Conch was frightening, and it immediately retreated back into its shell. Its blue light appeared a moment later. The Rainbow Sea Conch gathered its rainbow-colored substance chains into powerful waves of rainbow glass that went right for the phoenix. Ping. The glass covered the phoenix. The Black Sea Conch poked its head out when it saw the fire phoenix get trapped. It was so happy that it jumped a little. Ping. The next second, the phoenix shrieked, and the red flames of its body rose. The incredibly hard glass turned to lava beneath the strength of the bird's flames. The melted glass began to run like candle wax. The phoenix flapped its wings, and the glass shattered completely. Even the shards soon melted into a red liquid. The underwater landscape was smoldering, and the light danced strangely over the seafloor. It was shockingly pretty. The rainbow sea conch saw all this, and even more rainbow substance chains lashed out crazily. They became another weird shape of glass that headed for the phoenix. The phoenix flapped its wings and spat out some gold fire. The fire pierced through the rainbow sea conch's glass and kept on going towards the beast. The rainbow sea conch's eyes opened wide. It gathered up power upon its shell, and then its body retreated inside. The gold fire splashed atop the crystal conch shell. Instead of breaking the shell, though, the fire burned around the shell and made it shine like a rainbow. The phoenix looked at Hansen and the blood Kirin. It spat a fireball toward them and melted the glass that had trapped them. Little red bird. Hansen, 
and the blood Karen escaped. Hansen, upon seeing the red phoenix, was ridiculously happy. He exclaimed, the sun raven's body and the bird's nest weren't wasted. The little red bird is good. The little red bird flapped its wings and sent even more fire toward the rainbow sea conch. The scary gold fire wrapped around the sea conch like an embrace of flames. When the fire rose, the rainbow shell became a golden color. The shine dimmed. Hansen glanced over and saw the black sea conch trying to escape. So, Hansen summoned Spell as a sniper rifle and fired a bullet at the conch shell. The black sea conch hadn't wanted to draw the phoenix's attention, so it hadn't made use of its king area. It was slow, and Spell's bullet hit the shell and broke it. The beast started to bleed. The black sea conch squealed. Its situation had become even more desperate, so it unleashed its blue light and began moving away as quickly as it could. You want to run away? Hansen pursued the creature, continuing to shoot at it. The next bullet went through the blue light area and struck the black sea conch. It flew through the hole made by the previous bullet, and this time, blood flowed out like a spring. The black sea conch's recovery powers were strong, but that bullet hole wasn't recovering in the least. The bullet hole existed on the beast as if it was a separate entity. It wasn't healing. That was the work of Spell's eternity skill. It made a solid wound that was impossible to heal again. That skill was more than a match for the black sea conch, too. Even a deified creature might not be able to break the power of that eternity skill. Hansen got closer to the black sea conch, and he turned spell into dual pistols. He fired them repeatedly, and every bullet struck that same bullet hole. Ever-increasing amounts of blood poured from the black sea conch. The blue light area combined with the sea conch's shell and created an excellent defense system, but the flesh of the sea conch didn't have a high level of defense. Plus, it wasn't nearly fast enough to evade the bullets. Before long, it had been shot many times in that same spot. The black sea conch's body began to tremble. Its flesh shook, and black clouds poured out of its flesh. The black clouds were swarms of little black sea conches. Hansen's body shone with king geese. The little sea conches tried to drill into Hansen's pores, but they all broke against the king geese. The black stone sea conch couldn't run, and the little sea conches were unable to do anything to Hans' senator the big beast had been shot and it was rapidly losing blood. The purple teeth power kept spreading into it as well, making the wound even worse. The black sea conch's climbing ability slowed. The blue light had weakened. When the blue light was fully extinguished, Hansen fired his pistols to completely shatter the creature's shell. Without the protection of the blue light, the conch's shell crumbled under the onslaught. Xenogeneic king hunted. Move mountain sea conch. Xenogeneic gene found. Obtained beast soul. Hansen happily went to check out what type of beast soul he had received. King class Xenogeneic beast soul move mountain sea conch. Area type. Hansen was shocked. He hadn't expected to receive another powerful area type beast soul. He didn't know if king class area beast souls were extremely common or if he was simply lucky. Hansen summoned his new beast soul to find out what it was like. Hansen's body shimmered with blue light, the same light that he had just seen the move mountain sea conch use. This delighted Hans Sr. He wanted to investigate the blue light further, but the rainbow sea conch was starting to emit some strange wheezing noises. Hansen looked over and saw the rainbow sea conch still being slowly cooked by the little red bird. The creature appeared to be in a frenzy as it tried to run away. Chapter 2362 Getting a Beast Soul Again The rainbow sea conch kept running, but the fire across its shell couldn't be extinguished. It was like a flaming will blazing a trail through the water and across the sand. The fire refused to go out. The little red bird, the harbinger of death. Hansen was grinning like an idiot. Although he knew the little red bird had become a deified elite, being able to damage another deified elite like that was remarkably impressive. Plus, the little red bird had only recently become deified, so it could probably improve even more in the future. In time, it might grow up to become something like the ancient water god. The little red bird caught in pride. It flew to the rainbow sea conch, and Hansen followed it while shouting, Save his last breath for me. I want to take the last hit. Hansen chased after it, and the rainbow sea conch eventually found itself unable to move any farther. The meat inside its shell was boiling. The shell had turned translucent white, and it looked as if the creature was being barbecued. Is it still breathing? Hansen drew his thunder god spike and ran at the fiend. It was a deified xenogeneic, 
and although Han Sen's chances of getting a beast's soul out of it were low, he still wanted to try. The fire around the little red bird's body vanished, and it floated down to land on Han's senator. It opened its mouth toward the rainbow sea conch and inhaled. The gold fire was pulled back into its belly. Han Sen's thunder god spike slammed into the cooked conch meat, but it was like a blade hitting rubber. The spike would not go in. Hansen gathered up all the power he could, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't penetrate the flesh. As the rainbow sea conch's life faded, its body crystallized. It became more and more resistant to Hansen's strikes. Hansen felt depressed. The prize was right there in front of him, but he couldn't take it. Not long after, the rainbow sea conch was completely crystallized. Every inch of its body was a xenogenic gene. It was like a piece of art made from rainbow crystal. What a shame. The rainbow sea conch was very dead. Hansen was unable to break its flesh, even though he used his thunder god spike to strike it. Electrocution is a type of damage, right? Will the final hit count as mine? Hansen felt very nervous. The prospect of earning a deified beast soul was very enticing. Xenogenic deified hunted, crystal god conch. Xenogenic gene found. Hansen felt as if he had been dropped off at the pearly gates at heaven, only to fall way down into the fiery pits of hell. He had managed to get the kill, but he didn't get a deified beast soul. Anyway, at least I got the deified gene. That is the biggest reward, Hansen mumbled to himself, but he still felt crestfallen. Hansen sent the crystal god Conk's body back to the sanctuaries. Lifeless items weren't destroyed in the sanctuaries, just like the baby sun raven's body. The small black sea conches invading the blood kirin were gone. It was wounded, but it wasn't in any danger of death. With its life force and recovery speed, it wouldn't take long for the blood kirin to be back in action. The blood kirin began to feast on the flesh of the move mountain sea conch and what remained of the electric dragon. With gritted teeth, Hansen gave the move mountain sea conch's denogenic gene to the blood kirin as well. He wanted it to recover the power it had lost. It was two days before he made it back to Underwater Town. By then, the wounds on the Blood Kirin were no longer visible, but it had yet to fully heal. The Blood Kirin had been badly hurt by the Crystal God Conk, and the little sea conches had ravaged its organs. It had been really damaged. If it hadn't been given plenty of resources to heal, it would have taken a very long time for it to get better. Hansen kept on exploring the Underwater Realms, but he was never able to find another King-class Xenogeneic. He didn't know why they had found two kings and a deified in that one region. Hansen wanted to go back to that cave and take a look, but he wasn't good at shrinking his body. That cave grew smaller the deeper it went. It eventually reached the width of a needle. Hansen spent some time digging his way through but found nothing. He decided to give up after a while. I should take the blood cure into King's Garden to heal, Hansen decided. Of course, Hansen had no intention of provoking the king tree again. He wanted to find a root king dragon there so he and the blood kirin could absorb some king air. If the blood kirin could absorb some of that king air, the healing process could be hastened. Even though Hansen tried to keep a low profile, entering king's garden still drew a lot of attention. It was very hard to find a primary root king dragon that was unoccupied. Hansen found one, and after looking closer, he smiled. He lifted his lips and said, What a shame. It is Prince Swordstar. Hansen flew over to Prince Swordstar without hesitation. Prince Swordstar was sitting atop a primary root king dragon with a few of his guards. When he saw Hansen coming toward him, his face changed. My good little brother, haven't you heard that you should respect your elders? I am taking this primary root king dragon. Get lost, Hansen said as he approached. Prince Swordstar was very annoyed that Hansen had been released from prison by Miss Mirror. Now, hearing Hansen say this, he was so angry that he shouted, I should respect our elders, but even if we give it to you, I doubt you'd be capable of defending it. So, what is the point of you having it? Other princes and princesses knew that Prince Swordstar had brought Han San to the sentencing court. With Bai's spiteful personality, everyone knew that he wasn't going to let go of the affront lightly. They turned excited eyes toward the brewing confrontation. It looks like this big brother should teach you a lesson. Hansen laughed coldly. His fist gathered up power, and he used the Extreme King's shocking sky punch. He threw his fist toward Prince Swordstar, who was sitting on the dragon's head. Get them. Prince Swordstar barked, looking at the blood kirin in fear. He didn't dare fight. For guards suddenly emerged from behind the dragon. 
Two of them were half deified. Ordinarily, Hansen would allow the Blood Kirin to fight. But the Blood Kirin was still injured, so he couldn't let him go forward. Hansen laughed and said, Let this big brother teach you the invincible ways of Arael. Extreme King. After that, he sent an Extreme King shocking sky punch toward all four guards. Is Bai crazy? All the princes and princesses were shocked. They knew who Bai really was. Although he had managed to claim the Alpha statue and earn the protection of the Kingese, he still wasn't very high level. He was a first-tier king. With his power and original Water King body, he could fight a single half-deified, but it was simply arrogant to think he could take on four at once. Chapter 2363, Punching Four Guards He's asking to be humiliated. Take him down, Prince Swordstar growled. Baiyi is getting crazier and crazier. He was lucky to get the Alpha statue and earn the protection of the Kingis, but it's gone to his head. He's become arrogant and blind to who he really is, Prince 19 said coldly. Bai Ling Shuang was near. She frowned, thinking that Bai Yi's behavior was far too reckless. When Hansen earned the protection of the Kingis, Bai Ling Shuang wondered if she should stay close to him, or perhaps even ally with him. But now that Bai Yi had just become a tiny bit successful, his arrogance had become overwhelming. The thought of joining up with him was severely reduced now. She wasn't afraid of godlike enemies, but she was afraid of teaming up with someone who was gluttonous and uncontrollable. Bai Yi's anger and recklessness would most likely cause her a lot of trouble. Bai Ling Shuang had her doubts about him before, but now he was confirming her suspicions. Hansen wasn't concerned about what anyone thought of him, though. He was copying Bai Yi's personality and trying to act as the bitter prince would have. Plus, he didn't like Prince Swordstar. This was the perfect excuse for him to teach the brat a lesson. When Hansen prepared his extreme king shocking sky punch, the four guards gathered to defend Prince Swordstar. The four powerful enemies had to give up on the idea of attacking the Blood Kirin to deal with Hansen's punch, first and foremost. But they didn't dare to actually kill Hans Senator, they just wanted to put him in his place. Killing was a crime in King's Garden, but if they killed the Blood Kirin, they'd be locked up but not sentenced to death. Prince Swordstar's uncle was the captain of the sentencing court, after all. The consequences of killing Bai Yi, on the other hand, would be quite lethal. Hansen didn't seem concerned about the situation. He used a shocking sky punch at max power, and his punch combined with the water skills he had learned from watching Ancient Water God. He modified the shocking sky punch to accommodate the new ability. When he cast it, the punch was like a shocking sky big wave. A wave was unleashed, and then another wave. The waves continued to roll out, growing in power as they came. He could fight four people with this, and the four guards were suddenly at a large disadvantage. The two half-deified guards didn't dare to fight. They were afraid of killing Prince 16, but a few punches later, their eyes widened. The four guards weren't the only ones who were shocked. Prince Swordstar, by Ling Shuang, Prince 19, and other royal children stood and watched with mouths agape. Hansen stood like a king that ruled the entire universe. His punches were heavier than the sea, and they crushed the stars. The four guards fell backward with screams that rocked the skies. Their knives, swords, spears, and punching lights were exploding. But even so, they could not break down Hansen's punches. Under those punches that were like a dragon from the sea, even half deified guards were unable to keep their heads above water. They were like boats navigating a sea of treacherous waves. It was incomparable to the sky and ground powers that they knew. Old 16 has practiced shocking sky punch to this degree? Prince 19 couldn't believe his eyes. Bai Ling Shuang was shocked, too. Other members of the Extreme King could use a stronger version of shocking sky punch, but they had developed the ability to the 8th or 9th tier. The fact that Hansen could use such a strong shocking sky punch at the 1st tier was mind-blowing. Not even a half-deified royal child could do what he was doing. Hansen practiced the most basic shocking sky punch, and other royal children had practiced the more advanced versions. Bai Wei had practiced the Extreme King Final Punch. Its power should have been much greater than the basic version of the skill. Hansen was using the shocking sky punch, but it had been fused with water will. It was an upgraded version of the skill, a modification that Hansen had engineered himself. That was why Bai Ling Shuang was so shocked. Tailoring the shocking sky punch into the exact skill he needed wasn't a feat that a simple-minded person could perform. Bai Ling Shuang looked at Han Sound, who was suppressing four guards like they were dogs, 
and felt a flurry of mixed emotions. Prince Swordstar gritted his teeth. He was young, so he had relied on his mother's power. He was fairly well known amongst the royal children, and having a prince like Bai suppress all four of his guards was unacceptable. It would have been okay if Hansen was half deified and the guards were from a smaller race, but that was not the case. Prince Swordstar's guards hailed from big factions of the Extreme King. The two half deified guards were of mixed heritage, but they had Extreme King blood in their veins. They still possessed the power of a half deified Extreme King. They shouldn't lose against Prince 16. But now, the two half deified guards and the two ninth tier kings were fighting Han's senator, and they were suppressed and unable to push him back. Prince Swordstar knew he wouldn't be able to do anything either. It made him feel as if a snake had sunk its fangs into his heart. His face darkened, twisting with hate. I didn't know Brother 16 possessed such a power. How surprising, said a man sitting on a king dragon's head. He was clad in a gold robe, and his voice was hard. There was a green-armored man sitting next to the gold-robed man. He said, I cannot even tell if he truly is old 16. Why are you referring to him as if he is important, crown prince? Brother 4, you are wrong. If father accepts him, then that means he is brother 16, the crown prince said. Prince 4 chuckled. I don't think so. We both know what old 16 was like. Since when has he been this smart? He's fighting four people at once with a punching skill and he's playing them like a fiddle. That isn't something old 16 could do. He was stupid. The crown prince squinted as he looked at Han Sr., who knows? We cannot tell. Perhaps we have underestimated him. Prince 4 didn't reply. He grunted and stared at Han Sen, who shone with the glory of both a god and a demon. Pang. Hansen punched and struck a half-deified guard. The shocking sky punch had been cast many times, and its power had grown by many multiples. Even a half-deified elite couldn't withstand those blows. Hansen punched an enemy's chestplate and caved it in. Blood sprayed from the half-deified guard's lips. No hesitation. The next second, Hansen's fist was coming down toward the guard's head like a falling star. The scary power was like a river descending from the sky. Bai, you killed my guard. I will kill you. Prince Swordstar screamed, his eyes turning red. I didn't dare, Hansen said simply. The scary, shocking sky punch landed on the half deified guard. Chapter 2364 King Air Jean. By E. Prince Swordstar shouted. He sounded as if he was about to eat someone. Catcha. Hansen unleashed his shocking sky punch, and the half deified guard's bones were pulverized. There wasn't a single inch of bone that remained intact. His body slumped to the ground like a sack of mud. Hansen grabbed the half deified guard and lifted him back up. The man's body was trashed but he wasn't dead. Hansen threw him at Prince Swordstar. As per your request, he is alive, Hansen said flatly. Bai, I will kill you. Prince Swordstar caught the guard, whose entire body had been devastated. Hansen had even shattered the guard's xenogenic gene. Prince Swordstar was furious. I have gone to so much trouble to be nice to you. You asked me to keep him alive. I refrained from killing him, and you still aren't happy. It's hard work being a big brother. Hansen said, then he jumped. The other three guards were overwhelmed with a mixture of anger and fear. They wanted to run away, but the shocking sky punch was already coming down on them like the angry waves of a turbulent sea. They couldn't escape that wrath, but if they tried to repel it, that raging power would still crush their bodies. The punching powers came for each of them in turn. The two ninth tier kings went down first, then the last half deified guard fell as well. Hansen trashed their bodies in a few quick punches, then tossed their crippled bodies back toward Prince Swordstar. The nearby royal children were shocked. Hansen's cruel and overbearing skills made them think twice about how they might treat him in the future. Prince Swordstar gritted his teeth until his jaws ached, and he had to resist the urge to attack Hansen himself. He glared at Hansen, then carried the four disabled guards away. Come on, that Prince Swordstar is such a wimp. He's just accepting that loss? Prince 19 lifted his lips in a sneer. That is why he is scary. That Prince Sword Star isn't one to be ruled by simple emotions. But Song Long approached. He sighed and said, Our generation of the Extreme King is both the most promising and the most hopeless generation there has ever been. There are too many wonderful royal children, and now there are people like 16, 17, and even Sword Star. When the time comes for someone to claim leadership, it won't happen peacefully. Chaos is fun. 
Otherwise, life is like a pool of stagnant water. That is boring, Prince 19 said. Everyone watched as Hans and climbed onto the primary root king dragon. No one dared to provoke him. He had just suppressed half-deified guards. After all, the royal children knew they couldn't compete against Hans' senator. Even the ones that could fight him knew that they didn't want to do so in King's Garden. Hansen took the blood Kieran up to sit atop the king dragon's head with him. The other royal children drifted away. After a few hours of daylight, the yellow leaves began to glow. The primary root king dragon roared and dropped underground. Unlike the small king dragon Hansen had used before, this primary root king dragon was big, and it went far underground. It went so close to that golden spot. When Hansen had trained with Bai Wei, the source of power had looked like a distant golden sun. Now, because he was so much closer, it was too big to describe. Waves of gold king air began to emerge and flow over Hansen and the blood Kirin. Any king air he absorbed would help Hansen refine the powers in his body. The blood Kirin was sucking in the king air greedily, and he looked healthier with every breath. After Hansen absorbed 30 waves of king air, he heard an announcement play in his head. Duke Jean plus one. Hansen was shocked, but he was also very happy. He said, are these waves of king air actually xenogenic genes? When he came last time, he had been very far from the tree. The king air he absorbed had been too weak to generate a duke gene. Now he had a lot of king air, so he could exploit its full strength. Hansen hadn't been terribly interested in the king air before, but now he was motivated. He absorbed the king air as fast as he could. He absorbed 50 waves of king air and heard the duke gene notification once more. If this is the case, I don't need to find any more xenogeneics. Simply absorbing this king air will give me enough duke genes. Hansen thought happily. He had claimed this primary root king dragon, and so he was going to absorb the king air like mad. While the primary root king dragon was still underground, Hansen's duke gene tally reached the prestigious 100. He absorbed many waves of king air, but his duke genes didn't increase beyond that. Hansen used the hundred duke genes to open the first gene lock of the story of genes. It was a smooth process that went exactly as it had for Jade Skin. After the story of genes had its first gene lock open, he obtained an astral body in the Geno universe. One hundred duke genes were gone from his total, and so Hansen stayed put to collect more of that king air. His duke gene tally started to rack up again. This is some good stuff. Hansen grinned. He had claimed this primary root king dragon, so he wasn't going to go anywhere. He planned to use the king air to unlock the gene locks of a few different geno arts. Somewhere far away in King's Kingdom, there was a mountain that hung in the darkness. The mountain looked gigantic, but no matter how long you spent flying toward its peak, you could never reach the mountain. It was known as Extreme Mountain, one of the three famous mountains of King's Kingdom. Countless terrifying legends swirled around its existence, and many elites had been killed while exploring its reaches. Many half-deified and deified elites were said to roam there. The secrets of Extreme Mountain had yet to be discovered, as there were many places on the mountain slopes that not even King by himself would dare explore. On the left side of Extreme Mountain, a ghost-like man walked along a path. Every step he took was like some invincible power was coming down on him, making his body look lighter. By the time he was halfway up the slope, his body appeared half-transparent. He looked as if he was going to fade away at any second. But that man still stared up at the peak of Extreme Mountain, and he kept walking forward in a bid to reach it. Half mountain, half sky, half extreme. One step, one life, one world. When he was halfway up the mountain, he saw that sentence scrawled into a cliff face. It was written in blood. The man saw it, but he kept on going up the mountain. He didn't pay any further attention to the writing. The legends state that those words were left behind by the extreme king's seventh king. The seventh king went there as a half-deified, and he stopped there to write that down before leaving. After that, all the heirs of the extreme king that ventured to the extreme mountain and went past those words were known to have died. There had only been one exception to that rule. The exception was the previous ruler of the extreme king, King Bao. King Bao went past the writing, but he didn't die and he never talked about his experiences on Extreme Mountain. All he said was that if there was any person fortunate enough to reach the top of Extreme Mountain, they would become the best of their generation and achieve an invincible body. Chapter 2365 The Woman in the Stone Far away, across the galaxy, in a xenogenic space that resembled purgatory, 
There were many creatures from all sorts of different races. They were getting lashed by whips. A hellfire raged everywhere, and they were using shovels, pickaxes, hammers, and other tools to dig into the rock. The stones were dark like ink, but they were also dull. The stones absorbed any light that shone against them, giving nothing back. The Duke-class elites were wearily lifting their shovels to strike the stone. Sparks flew with each hit, and bits of the stone crumbled away and split. The Dukes and Marquises were like slaves, while the Barons and Viscounts were relegated to transportation duties. The stones they collected were sent to a stone factory, where all sorts of stone weaponry were forged. A man stood over them, his expression hard. He used a pin to draw carefully across the stone, marking dimensions as if he was planning how the rock should be carved into. The noble workers that were in charge of carving and grinding looked at the man with great envy. The nobles were like Hell's guard dogs. The Hell race ruled, and all other races existed as thralls. Even the kings of other races were treated as mere slaves. There was a crystallizer man who was a marquise, and he looked very weak. Over the past few months, he had been used by the Hell. He was skilled enough that he didn't have to perform the menial tasks of labor. He was able to enjoy many resources, as he was a person that the hell looked at very differently. Ningyu, you have done well. What should we do next to increase efficiency? Hell King squinted his eyes, looking at the young man approaching the palace. The crystallizer had captured his curiosity. The man was an outsider marquise, but many hell nobles had praised him over the past few months. That was a big deal. Not even kings received the treatment. Hell King planned to ask the man's advice to humor his own curiosity, then toss the man back in with the slaves. After all, everyone knew that only the Hell were important. Other races were designed to be slaves and nothing more. As time went by, Ningyu gave suggestions to the king every once in a while, and all of his suggestions had increased the efficiency of their work. It saved the Hell King a lot of time and trouble. Every time Hell King wished to send Ningyu back to the other slaves, Ningyu would come up with an even better plan. When Hell King heard his designs, he would allow Ningyu to stay even longer and put those new designs into action. After a while, Hell King wasn't the only one who had grown used to the presence of Ningyu. The whole Hell Society had become accustomed to him. Blood. Blood. There is blood. Screaming sounds howled out of the stone factory. Ningyu frowned and looked in their direction. A big rock had been cracked open and a red liquid was oozing out of the gap. It smelled like blood. The slaves were running for their lives, and Ningyu stared at the big black rock. This wasn't the first time this had happened. In Ningyu's first few months there, this had taken place three times. The first time they found a black rock that bled, there was a red bug inside it. The monster had ended up killing a few thousand slaves and guards. In the end, Hell King himself had to show up and kill it. It was the only way to get rid of the bug. The second time this occurred, when a black rock started to bleed, the slaves of that area became infected with some sort of toxin. They endured it for 10 days before their bodies dissolved into liquid. At least 10,000 died in that incident. The third time they discovered a bleeding black rock, a little green sword came out. It pierced through the head of the duke who had been inspecting the stone. Then it flew into the sky and disappeared. This was now the fourth incident that Ningyu had seen. Red liquid welled in the cracks and it was like blood tears were rolling out, one by one. Suddenly, Ningyu saw a finger appear through the gap. The finger glistened like jade. It was beautiful, but the fingernail shone a disturbing shade of red. Even looking at the unsettling sight would leave someone shivering. One finger, two fingers, three fingers. More and more fingers appeared through the crack. When all ten fingers appeared, there was a loud cracking noise. The fingers tore the rock in half. A woman wearing creepy red armor emerged. Her red eyes gleamed, staring down at the creatures that were all running away in fear. Suddenly, the woman moved. She was like a demon, straight from hell. She turned into a bloody shadow, and wherever her blood-red fingers went, creatures screamed. Blood fountained from their bodies, and in no time at all, many creatures had been reduced to shreds. The terrifying woman showed no sign of backing down. Hell King and the other kings of their race went to meet that wicked force, and the entire land turned into a bloody battlefield. The hell-looking xenogenic space was thrown into turmoil. Blood, blood everywhere. There was the blood of slaves. The blood of the hell. Broken bodies littered the ground, and almost no one was left alive in that xenogenic space. Two of them were still standing, though. 
their life forces flickering in the hellscape. One of them was the weird woman in her red armor. The other was Hell King. The strange woman didn't look to be in good condition. Her red eyes shone with a scary light. Her red armor was covered in cracks and punctures, and a piece of a sword blade was still embedded in it. There was a big bloody hole in her chest. It was impossible to guess which weapon had dealt that blow to her. She was bleeding, and she could barely stand. Hell King wasn't in great shape, either. One of his horns had been broken, and one of his legs was gone. His belly had been cut open, and his guts and intestines were starting to spill out. Hell King's face looked enraged. All the inhabitants of that xenogenic space had been murdered by the strange woman. Aside from him, no one else had been left alive. I will make you die. Hell King opened his mouth and spat out a mass of blood. The blood drained away across the ground, revealing a small green sword. If Ningyu had seen it, he would have recognized it. It was the sword that had flown away when they opened that third black rock. The woman saw the green sword, and her eyes lost their anger. She looked scared. Hell King roared. He picked up the green sword and ran at the weird woman. The green sword was aimed at her head. The woman blocked the little green sword with one hand and shoved her other hand into Hell King's chest to grab his heart. The green sword broke under the force of her grip, and her fist tightened around Hell King's heart. Dong! The little green sword fell to the ground, and the light in Hell King's eyes started to fade. Just as the fire of his life was about to be extinguished, Hell King roused himself. He would rather burn out the last of his strength than slowly wither away. He quickly grabbed the weird woman's neck. Chapter 2366, Back to Night Charm. Catcha. The green light flashed. Hell King's head was cut off. The strange woman was stunned. She stared at the man who looked so skinny, clutching that green sword. All the other creatures around them were dead. The woman squinted, trying to remember exactly what had happened when she came out of the black stone. She remembered that the skinny man had been in the stone factory when she emerged. He would have been the one she killed first. But now that she thought about it, she didn't remember actually killing him. He had been too ordinary to keep her attention. She just tossed some red light his way and ignored him. He isn't dead. The strange woman looked at the man, who was smiling as he held the green sword. For some reason, when she saw his smile, the woman wanted to smile with him. It was like his smile was contagious. The woman looked at Ning Yu and said, You are not bad. If you ally with me, you can use my deified powers. Then, you can become defied as well. Unstoppable. You will become the greatest in the universe. Ning Yu smiled and didn't answer. He walked slowly toward the woman. You don't believe me? The woman looked intently at Ning Yu's face. She knew she should be wary, but she couldn't resist that infectious smile. She found herself treating him as a friend rather than a foe. I believe you, Ning Yu said seriously. The woman looked relieved. Somehow, what Ning Yu said felt incredibly trustworthy. His words seemed rock steady, as if whatever he said had to be a universal truth. The woman sighed, and just as she was about to respond, Ning Yu used the little green sword to lop her head off. The woman's head rolled across the ground with her red eyes still staring at Ning Yu as if she couldn't believe what he had just done. Ning Yu sighed and said, I believe you can give me power, but I cannot beat the one I wish to with power alone. I need to take this step by step, my way, before I can stand before him. Ning Yu wiped his little green sword. In his mind, he was still standing in that man's shadow. Determination flashed through Ning Yu's eyes. Then they became calm again. He walked up to the bodies of the strange woman and Hell King. Hansen maintained his claim on the primary root king, Dragon, to absorb the king air. He stayed there for a whole month. The blood Kirin also absorbed a lot of king air, and over the month of training, he healed fully. Over the same period of time, Hansen managed to get 500 Duke genes. But the story of genes could only open three gene locks before it stopped. As for the rest of the Duke genes Hansen collected, he used them to open the gene locks of Jade Skin and the Blood Pulse Sutra. Jade skin seemed to have the same limit of three gene locks. Opening the first gene lock grants an astral body. Opening the second gene lock provides a celestial body. Opening the third gene lock provides something above a celestial body. The third body feels different from a celestial body, but I can't pinpoint exactly what that difference is. Hansen was amazed by the results of opening the third gene lock, even if he didn't fully understand what had happened. As he trained, he also earned another reward. He managed to bring his Dongxian Sutra up to the level of Duke. It had an element. 
but because he didn't have any more Duke jeans, he couldn't open up any more gene locks. After the story of jeans opened its third gene lock, it became difficult to absorb the power of the Kingese in his body. It was like the Kingese had fully merged with Hansen's cells, and they could no longer be separated. Hansen still wished to stay in King's Garden to absorb more King Air, though. He wanted to open three gene locks for the Blood Pulse Sutra and the Dong Shen Sutra. His hopes were soon dashed, however, because Bai Ling Shuang eventually showed up. Brother 16, I'm headed back tonight, Charm Town, Bai Ling Shuang said in a friendly tone. I'd like to go there myself, but I haven't gotten an invitation. Hansen then thought to himself, there's no way that she's randomly being nice. What does she want this time? I'll have share and the drinks ready. I will be the host tonight. Bai Ling Shuang gave him a lazy smile. In that case, I'll be there. Hansen's eyes were full of greed. Hansen didn't actually want to go, of course. But since Bai Ling Shuang had extended such an explicit invitation, he didn't think he could turn her down. He would have to go eventually, so agreeing immediately would cast fewer doubts on his identity. Bai Yi's ardent desire for share was well known. If he didn't accept the invitation, that would be very strange. In the most luxurious suite in Night Charm Town, Hansen had draped himself over a sofa. He held share casually under one arm, and he swirled a glass of wine with his other hand. He looked at Bai Ling Shuang and said, Sister Tin, tell me what it is you really want. You have been very generous with me this evening. Surely this isn't simply an opportunity for us to hang out. The exams for the royal children are coming up soon. What are you planning to do about them, Brother Sixteen? Bai Ling Shuang asked with a smile. Hansen had a sip of wine and squeezed shares but with a smile. What can I do? I'm just a first-tier king, and half-deified royal children will be competing. Even some deifieds will participate. What chance do I stand? Bai Ling Shuang looked like she wanted to roll her eyes, but she still smiled and said, Maybe not. The exams are something father has established so that our progress can be reviewed. We don't need to be number one. We just need to perform well to impress father. If we do that, we can be rewarded. After pausing, Bai Ling Shuang said, I have witnessed your recent progress with my own eyes, Brother 16. If you perform just as well in the exam, father will notice. You will be heavily rewarded. I don't think so, Hansen said with an uncomfortable feeling. Bai Ling Shuang looked at Hansen for a while and said, If you really don't want to get first place in the exams, I have a way in which we can make money. Are you interested in hearing more? I lack pretty much everything. I have a distinct lack of money, too. Please tell me, Sister Tin. Hansen suddenly looked much more alert, and he considered Bai Ling Shuang with interest. She smiled and said, You know that in the exam, there is a task that sends you to Bone Mountain? Bone Mountain is obscenely dangerous for ordinary royal children. Aside from Brother 4 and Sister 3, who were deified, any other royal child that goes there might fail. Even the Crown Prince. But Brother 16, you are different. You have the King Gi's protection. You can surely reach the peak of Bone Mountain. Why don't you just tell me what you're after? Hansen frowned. You help me to get to the peak of Bone Mountain, and I will give you whatever you want. Bai Ling Shuang's smile had vanished, and she looked dead serious. Chapter 2367 Strange Numbers As he left Night Charm Town, Hansen got to thinking about the exam. The exam gauged the power of the royal children. Some of the tests would judge the royal children's leadership potential and their collective power when placed in groups. Their guards were allowed to join them. But other tests focused on the individual power of the royal children. Only the royal children could participate in those. One of the activities, for example, involved hiking up Bone Mountain and reaching its peak. Bone Mountain was one of the three famous mountains in King's Kingdom. It wasn't as dangerous as Extreme Mountain, but that didn't mean reaching its peak would be easy. Its slopes were quite treacherous. Hiking up Bone Mountain was a trial that showcased power, courage, and endurance. The mountain was commonly called Rot Bone Mountain. The environment was highly toxic, and when people were too stubborn to abandon their attempts to climb the mountain, the toxicity would corrode them until their bodies were gone. Only their proud skulls were left behind. Hansen hadn't been to Rot Bone Mountain before, so he wasn't sure what sort of power he would have to contend with. He knew that it could destroy courage and endurance and make proud creatures lower their heads. But Bai Ling Shuang mentioned that if royal children possessed the Kingi's Ao or Ju, they were sure to have a higher chance of reaching the peak. Hansen had received loads of Kingi's protection, 
including Ao and Chu. The chance of him reaching the top of Rot Bone Mountain was high, so Bai Ling Shuang was willing to pay a high price for his help. Bai Ling Shuang wanted to go to Rot Bone Mountain's peak, not for King Bai's compliments, but for the benefits Rot Bone Mountain could provide. Those rewards could only be claimed by reaching the summit of that place. In regards to the exact nature of what she hoped to gain, Bai Ling Shuang didn't elaborate, and Han Sin didn't ask, What is atop Rot Bone Mountain's peak? As Hansen wondered about this, his phone started to ring. He looked at the number calling him and noticed that it was listed as unknown. He had disguised himself as Bai Yi, but he had kept his old phone number. He had been careful not to contact anyone on Planet Eclipse, though, in case the Extreme King screened the calls and picked up on something. Now suddenly, a strange number was calling him, which was confusing. He hesitated, but he still answered the call. He was curious. A beautiful woman with long, black hair appeared on his screen. Her face looked divine, and her emerald eyes were captivating. Her boobs were small, but everything else was great. Hansen looked at the woman in the video. She wasn't the most beautiful woman he'd seen, but he would rate her at a fine 9 out of 10. Still, he didn't remember ever seeing her before. You are? Hansen looked at the woman, and he noticed her reserved expression. The longer he looked at her, the more familiar she seemed. He just couldn't remember where they might have met. I am Ningyu. Can you talk? The woman's voice was very clear, but her words shocked Hans Senator. His eyes opened wide, and his mouth gaped. Hansen hadn't been able to place his sense of familiarity with the woman. Hearing the name Ningyu, however, made him feel like he'd been tossed. Now he knew where that familiar feeling came from. Aside from having a female body, the woman appeared and behaved just like Ningyu. If not for the emerald eyes that had captured his gaze, Hansen probably would have guessed who it was eventually. Even so, Hansen was still left speechless. Hang on. I'll call you back. Hansen ended the call and went in his computer. He logged in and called the number back. The call rang through, and the image of that beautiful woman appeared on Hansen's computer. What is it? Hansen held his laughter at bay. He didn't think anyone could disguise themselves as Ningyu. Ningyu was a very special person, so masquerading as him would be difficult. But even if someone went to the trouble to steal another person's identity, why would they choose Ningyu? He wasn't famous or important in the Geno universe, so what was the point? Not to mention that, even if there was something benefit to be gained, no one could make a woman disguise themselves as Ningyu. This was too much. Seeing Hansen attempting to hold back his laughter, Ningyu's eyes twitched. In an emotionless tone, he began to explain what had happened. Ningyu had been captured by the hell and he was forced into slavery in a secret hell xenogeneic space. During his incarceration, a strange woman appeared out of a black rock. She killed all of the hell and the slaves without discrimination. Ningyu had gotten his hands on a little green sword during the chaos, and he used it to kill Hell King and the woman from the rock. After killing them, Ningyu discovered that Hell King and the woman were both deified elites, not half-deified as he had assumed. This shocked Ningyu. He didn't understand how the little green sword had wielded so much power. Ningyu only had the power of a marquise. Even if he held a deified weapon, he shouldn't have been able to kill a deified xenogeneic. But the little green sword had decapitated two deified xenogeneics with ease. They had been injured, of course, so that was worth considering. But the little green sword's power was still mind-boggling. You say you used the green sword to kill two deified xenogeneics? Hansen stared at Ningyu unable to believe his ears. Even if Hansen used the Thunder God Spike, he couldn't damage deified xenogeneics. Ningyu was just a Marquise. The feat he had achieved with the little green sword was a bit unbelievable. Yes, and I received a deified beast soul. Ningyu pulled the little green sword out. That's a deified beast soul? You won big. After Hansen's shock subsided, he examined Ningyu's little sword. The blade was two fingers wide. It was an intriguing shade of dark green, but other than the color, nothing about the sword seemed very special. There were no engravings on the blade, and it didn't even have a scabbard to go with it. I would rather not have earned it, Ningyu said grimly. He flipped the green sword over to reveal its other side to Han Senator there was a green mark on it, as if some liquid had stained its surface. What is that? Hansen asked. I don't know. It won't go away. Ningyu paused and then went on to say, after I killed the two deifieds, their bodies became liquid, then disappeared. Nothing remained. Not even a xenogeneic gene. 
When Hansen heard this, he furrowed his brows, and his expression turned suddenly serious. With deified xenogeneics, their entire bodies were their xenogeneic genes. Melting one shouldn't have been possible. It had to be related to the green sword. I left the xenogeneic space. The first time I went to sleep, I woke up looking like this. Ningyu sighed. You. Uh. Did you lose? Hansen didn't know what to do. No, my manhood is still here. But some parts of me look womanlike. A muscle in Ning Yu's cheek spasmed. Chapter 2368 Evil Sword Hansen coughed awkwardly to fill the silence. Have you tried using your little sword to fix the situation? Hansen suddenly realized he was talking about Ning Yu's little sword, and he quickly shook his head to get rid of the thought. Ning Yu looked at him strangely and said, I have tried everything. I've tried destroying it and throwing it away. I've even tried selling it. No matter what I do, my body remains like this. And whenever I go to sleep, the thing is lying on my chest when I wake up. It looks like this is an evil sword. What are you going to do? Hansen knew Ning Yu was a very decisive guy. He wouldn't have contacted Hansen just to share some idle gossip. The little green sword came from a mine in a xenogenic space. So, I went back there and searched Hell King's place. I didn't find much. While the mine was mostly a dead end, I did discover something interesting. The hell were under the control of another race, and this master race had given them the job of running the mining operations. Building palaces and statues was just a cover-up. Their real purpose was getting to what was under the mines. After pausing, Ningyu went on to say, In order to figure out this green sword, we have to start with the mine. It will be best if you leave the xenogenic space for now, Hansen said. I'm on a planet belonging to the Thousand Treasures. Before I left, I erased all traces of my presence there. Ningyu said, Do you know who was behind all this? Hansen asked, I don't know. I only discovered that a master race was controlling the hell by piecing together all the information I could find. There is no evidence to back this up. Ningyu shook his head. Hansen was silent for a moment. Give me some time. I'm currently having some trouble of my own, and I cannot leave the extreme king just yet. If you wait for me, I will find a way to contact you once I get out of here. Okay. Ningyu didn't say much after that. They arranged a few more details and then hung up. Hansen's face was twitching. He wanted to laugh, but he couldn't. Luckily, Ningyu was a calm man who took misfortunes in stride. If the same thing had happened to Hansen, it would have driven him crazy. Hansen brought out a galaxy map belonging to the Extreme King and looked up the Xenogenic space Ningyu had mentioned. It wasn't listed. He also searched for the system that Xenogenic space supposedly resided in. The system belonged to a small race under the authority of Sky Palace. The race was so small that they were virtually unknown. It looks like it doesn't have anything to do with this small race. Not many people know about that xenogenic space, clearly. Hansen then thought to himself, the hell and the faction behind this are very secretive. This cannot be their territory. Perhaps they aren't allied with Sky Palace, and that is why they operated this mine in secret. If they are hesitant to re-enter that xenogenic space, Ningyu and I might have a chance. As he considered his options, Hansen started to develop a headache. The biggest problem right now was his inability to leave the Extreme King. Miss Mirror wouldn't let him go free. Hansen's limited power was a problem. Deified Xenogeneics could be dug up from the ground in that place, and he didn't have enough power to deal with one if they discovered it. If he wanted to go there, he would have to take the Little Red Bird. Otherwise, things could go horribly wrong if they stumbled across another elite. If he ended up attracting something awful like Ningyu had, Hansen wondered what might happen. The mere thoughts he conjured were enough to give him the chills. His skull felt downright numb. Still, Ningyu isn't the sort of person to rush into something. He'll be fine waiting. I should really just focus on my current situation before doing anything more. Hansen frowned as he thought of this. He and Lan Haishin sorted out a time to meet. He wanted to see this relic she spoke of. If he was able to claim it, it might provide a grand boost for his power. Even if Lan Haishi nabbed it, she was Bai Yi's wife. Hansen would be the one to help her with the relic, so surely he would get something out of the deal. Hansen decided that going with Lan Haishin and the others wouldn't be a bad idea, so he wasn't too upset about being dragged along. In fact, he found himself rather curious. He had little time before they went to see the relic. Instead of going to King's Garden on that day, he studied the secrets of the Dongshin Sutra at home. The Dongshin Sutra was different from other Geno arts. Even if he leveled up, 
he still had to understand how to use his developing powers. They weren't skills he could just use right away. Hansen knew basically nothing about the elemental body of the Dong Shen Sutra. It was similar to the Dong Shen Aura, but he could tell that there were some important differences. Hansen now had to figure out what it was exactly. He also spent some time studying the Move Mountain Sea Konkbi's soul, which he found quite interesting. The blue light it cast was amazing, but when it was cast upon creatures, it didn't have a direct effect. After a few days of investigating, Hansen discovered something. He understood the true way to make use of the Move Mountain King area. Outside Underwater Town's palace, the Siren nobles gathered together. There was a surprising number of them, probably 200 in all. There were five King Class Sirens and one that was half deified. Lan Haishin was King Class. The remnants of the Siren race weren't too shabby, but they wouldn't work for Han Senator, they only followed the commands of Lan Haishin. Bai Yi was the last generation of the Virgin's blood, and he was Lan Haishin's husband. But as far as those sirens were concerned, he was nothing. If Hansen hadn't made an impressive amount of progress in recent times, they would still be looking at him with disdain. Lan Haishin brought Bauer to the front of the line. Seeing Hansen and the Blood Kirin approach, Bauer looked terrified. She hid behind Lan Haishin and tugged at her clothes. Don't be afraid. Big sister is here. I wouldn't let anyone hurt you, Lan Haishin said soothingly, lowering herself to hug Bauer. Such a talented actress. It really is a waste that she hasn't taken up a career in acting. Hansen wanted to cry at the sight. Bauer was way too good. If he didn't know the real Bauer, he would have been completely fooled. Hansen chuckled coldly and looked at Bauer. Don't forget that she is my daughter. I am warning you. Do not touch Bauer. You won't be able to withstand the consequences of my anger. Seeing that Bauer was still pretending to be scared and hiding behind her, Lan Haishin stared at Hansen and said, Okay, but you aren't taking her with you. She isn't one of the siren. Hansen looked at Bauer and licked his lips. We are going. We cannot leave her here. Don't worry, she won't affect us. Lan Haishin pulled Bauer forward and ignored Han Sr. Hansen shrugged and rode after her on the blood Kirin. The siren were queuing in the rear, all of them looking quite excited. They were looking forward to what came next. Prince, can I stay behind? Lily stood behind Hansen and quietly asked for permission. You don't want to go? Hansen looked at Lily strangely. Lily started to answer, but suddenly, an old female siren next to Lan Haishin hissed. This is a big day for the siren, and all of us need to go. Unless you're not one of us? Lily was shocked, and she wrapped her arms defensively around her own body. She lowered her head and didn't say anything. Chapter 2369, Where the Relic Lies Hansen frowned, and Lily looked upset. Then he realized something. Hansen was riding atop the blood Kirin, following slowly behind Lan Haishin. He behaved as if he didn't care, but the truth was, he didn't know where the relic was. He stayed carefully behind Lan Haishin where he wouldn't have to lead the party. What confused Hansen was that the old female siren in front wasn't guiding them away from Planet Water Zone. They were actually headed for the deeper recesses of the sea. Does the siren treasure reside here on the planet? If the treasure is here, why haven't they just gone and taken it already? Hansen thought for a minute and suddenly realized, maybe Lan Haishin and the others don't have possession of the relic? Maybe they didn't bring it with them. The relic might have already been on Planet Water Zone when they came here. Hansen thought some more and he considered many details. He thought to himself, if that is what is happening, then Bai Yi's mother should have kept the relic. In that case, why didn't Bai Yi's mother give the relic to her son? Based on the angry journal entries on Bai Yi's computer, he had no idea where the relic was. But Lan Haishin did. This whole scenario makes no sense. Hansen thought some more, but he couldn't find a reasonable explanation for this. He eventually grew tired of the fruitless line of thought so he decided to roll with things and see where his luck might take him. He would love to take the relic for himself, but it would be fine if he couldn't. It wasn't his, after all. Following the guidance of that old siren woman, Hansen and the others stopped near a mountain deep beneath the sea. Hansen frowned and looked around. He was very familiar with this underwater mountain. The last time he was here, he had been chasing the Move Mountain Sea Cock. In fact, this was where he killed both the Move Mountain Sea Conk and the Crystal God Conk. But Hansen had been on the left side of the mountain back then. Now, he was on the right side of the mountain. The Crystal God Conk cannot be related to this relic, surely, Hansen thought. 
he felt something very strange occurring. Baie had killed all of Planet Water Zone's high-class Cenogeneics. This underwater mountain had two kings and one deified. That was definitely strange. My lady, it is okay. The old siren woman walked before a cliff face and bowed to Lan Haishin. Lan Haishin nodded and gave bower to the female siren guard. Then she walked in front of the mountain and took the necklace off her neck. The necklace was simple, a red chain adorned with a blue stone pendant. It wasn't shiny like a gem, so it didn't appear to be anything too special. If Lan Haishin hadn't brought it out now, Hansen would never have known that it was important. He would have walked right past it if it was lying on the side of the road. It was too ordinary looking to even draw the eye. There was a small triangular hole in the mountainside, and Lan Haishin slid the blue stone into it. The stone fit the small hole perfectly. Then, a booming noise came from within the mountain. The whole underwater mountain moved, revealing a dark path beneath. Stairs led downwards, but when Hansen tried to look down them, he could only see blackness. The seawater had been separated by some hidden force, too. The path was dry. The old siren woman slowly headed down the stairwell, and Lan Haishin brought Bauer and the other siren in with her. Hansen frowned and followed after Lan Haishin. He looked around dubiously, feeling nervous about something unseen. He couldn't quite tell what was making him unsettled, though. But Hansen's instincts were reliable. Aside from his guesses about whether or not he would receive a beast's soul, his other feelings were fairly accurate. If Hansen was feeling this unsettled, there had to be some danger lurking in that place. But he couldn't yet detect any presences that shouldn't have been there. The stairs led down and down, as if they would never end. The people shone like holy lights in the dark, but their lights only lit up a small portion of the area around them, and their lights didn't penetrate far below. Hansen looked down the dark stairs, and he felt as if he was walking into the hellish maw of some terrible beast. Lily was scared, and she stood as close as she could to the blood Kieran. She almost found herself hugging Hansen's legs. She was usually scared of the blood Kieran and stayed as far away from him as she could. Clearly, the darkness scared her far more. Her decision to stay that close to Hans Sin and the Blood Kirin revealed how frightened she really was. In other circumstances, Hansen already would have comforted her. But he was disguised as Bai. Bai wasn't a man who showed compassion and concern for others, so he pretended as if there was nothing to see. The group moved silently. Hansen wasn't certain how long they'd been traveling, but he figured it was at least eight hours before they saw a light up ahead in the darkness. We're almost there. The old siren woman looked happy, and she moved a little faster. The light grew brighter. After walking for another half hour, Hansen saw what was basking in the light. And what he saw shocked him. It was a crystal palace that looked like it had come straight out of a legend. The whole palace was bathed in holy light and mysterious clouds. It looked like something out of a dream. When Hansen and the others drew closer, they saw that the crystal palace's gate had a sign above it. It really did say Crystal Palace. Looking at the Crystal Palace, Hansen felt rather nervous. His heart jumped. The Crystal Palace was entirely transparent, as if it had been crafted from flawless crystals. He should have been able to see straight through it, but clouds and strange sparkles of rainbow light hung within the Crystal Palace. It was impossible to see what lay within the palace. The rainbow light caught Hansen off guard. It looked like the Crystal God Conks rainbow. The crystal of the crystal palace looked like the material that composed the crystal god conch shell. Is that just a coincidence? Hansen wondered, but he doubted that. Now Hansen hesitated to continue forward. If the crystal god conch was a xenogeneic from crystal palace, it was possible that another deified xenogeneic might be inside, as well. Hansen glanced over at Bauer and the little red bird atop Bauer's shoulder. They didn't seem concerned about the place, so that put him at ease a little. As Hansen was thinking, the team came before the gate of the Crystal Palace. And there, Lan Haishin looked at Han Sr., your turn. Hansen was startled. He didn't know what Lan Haishin meant, but he couldn't reveal his confusion. So, Hansen kept looking at the gate of the Crystal Palace, pretending to be lost in thought. You're already here. What are you waiting for? Do you not trust your mother? If she hadn't set the Crystal Palace gate to only open to your blood, I wouldn't have accepted her request. Lan Haishin looked at Hansen coldly. Now that you know where the crystal palace lies, are you really going to try to back out of our deal? Chapter 2370, Siren Bottle The relic was left behind by Baiyi's mother. Why didn't she just give it to Baiyi? 
She didn't even tell Bai Yi about its location, but she gave it to an outsider like Lan Haixin. Was Bai Yi's mother some patriot who valued the good of the siren above all? Hansen thought something was wrong about this situation. The old siren woman looked at Hansen, who had frozen on the spot. Ignoring what Lan Haixin had said, she barked in a rougher tone, My prince, neither your blood nor the Holy Virgin's blood is pure. Even if you knew where the relic was, without the Holy Virgin's blood, you wouldn't be able to activate the relic. The last Holy Virgin kept the relic from you because of your stubbornness. She was worried you'd hurt yourself with it. Hansen coldly grunted and said, How was I supposed to know, if she didn't want to give me the relic, anyway? Lan Haixin was annoyed. You harbor suspicions about your own mother? It would be shameful to have you as a son. I feel so sorry for her, putting all that effort into raising you. The old siren woman said, My prince, you worry too much. If the last holy virgin didn't want you to have the relic, why did she program the crystal palace to require your blood to open? She was worried that you would rush to claim the relic, come here alone, and get hurt by it. Now, you can claim the relic with the holy virgin lawn. By combining both of your blood together, you should be able to activate the relic. There will be no risk that way. This is what the last holy virgin wanted. Using blood again? I'm not really by e. Can my blood open the crystal palace? Hansen felt depressed, and then he thought to himself, maybe the programming of the crystal palace focuses on the original water king body. I will have to give it a try, at least. If that doesn't work, then I can tell them that I haven't fully overtaken Hansen's body, and that I still have some genes to bring into submission. I can tell them I will come back another time to try. I need to stall this for as long as possible. Once Hansen had thought of a plan, he walked up to the Crystal Palace's door. His right eye's purple eye butterfly was spinning fast as he examined the crystal door ahead of him. The crystal door was 10 meters tall, and it looked very powerful. There was a blurry halo around it, and it was filled with the colors of the rainbow. It looked rather magical. It was a double door, and each side held the depiction of a female siren. This palace had obviously been left behind by the siren, as the stylings were very distinctive. Hansen knew that he couldn't just drop some blood on the door and expect it to open. There must have been some sort of system involved, and that was what Hansen was looking for. With the aid of his purple eye butterfly, Hansen found a special place upon the door. Both sides of the door featured the engraving of a siren woman, and the two women's arms were folded into each other. All four hands came together to clutch a crystal bottle. The crystal bottle was at the center of the door. The style of the crystal bottle made Hansen frown, because it reminded him of the crystal god Kong's sheets of glass. The crystal bottle was like a carving. At the center of the bottle was a small hole. If he wasn't paying close attention, he wouldn't have noticed it. But with his purple eye butterfly, Hansen could see how the bottle had been made. Hansen walked right before the door. He raised his hand to the carving of the crystal bottle, and as he drew closer, he used the original Water King body to transform his hand into water. His fingers brushed the hole, and some water separated from his fingers to drip into it. Then Hansen pulled his hand back and took a step in retreat. He watched the Crystal Palace's door. From the reaction given by Lan Haixin and the others, Hansen knew he had done it correctly. But he was still being careful. He considered what he might say if he was unable to open the Crystal Palace's door. Catch a cha. As Hansen was rapidly preparing an explanation, the Crystal Palace's door produced a sharp noise. It split in two and opened inwards. Lan Haixin and the other sirens grinned widely, ecstatic. Hansen was secretly surprised. I was able to open it? Hansen had actually been hoping that his attempt to open it would fail. Success meant that his unsettled feelings were still going to hang around. The closer he was to the Crystal Palace, the more disturbed he felt. The door opened revealing everything inside the crystal palace. Beyond the big door was a golden hall that had also been made of crystal. At the end of the hall was an altar. A small crystal bottle stood on the altar's platform. Something that looked like a rainbow swirled blurrily inside it. The sight was quite mysterious. Lan Haixin and the others were dying to get into the hall. Hansen hesitated for a moment, but he ultimately decided to walk inside with them. With the little red bird there, he and Bao should be safe. Lily was scared, and she stayed by Han Sen's side. Hansen walked slowly, and he kept observing Lan Haixin and the others. They hadn't encountered any danger yet. The entire hall was very peaceful. Lan Haixin and the others stood in front of the altar. 
The old siren woman stared at the little bottle on its platform when she suddenly said, Yes, yes, this is our relic, the siren bottle. Our race can rise from the ashes once more. After that, her excitement broke into crying. Full of tears, she repeatedly bowed before the bottle. All of the sirens started to bow, copying the old siren woman. Even Lan Haishin lowered herself before the siren bottle. Hansen wasn't in the mood to participate. He just sat atop the blood Kirin and stared at the bottle. The bottle was around the size of a man's hand. The bottle was very tall, and two wings of glass flared out from its sides. The two wings of the bottle featured the faces of siren women. The bottle was small, but the work was very delicate. The two siren women looked almost alive, as if real people were smiling on it. The bottle was lovely, with a halo around it and a rainbow glowing from inside. It looked holy, almost sacred. However, whenever Hansen looked at the bottle, it felt sinister to him. Bai Yi, you and I can claim the holy bottle now, Lan Haishin said to Hansen, but she remained standing in front of the platform. Hansen frowned. The siren bottle was good stuff, clearly. His purple eye butterfly could tell him that much. The purple eye butterfly couldn't analyze the bottle, so it had to be some sort of deified treasure. But the evil presence of the siren bottle made Hansen feel afraid. He didn't want to take the risk of claiming it. Seeing that Hansen was still standing back, Lan Haishin frowned and said, Haven't you always wanted this relic? Why are you backing out now? Hansen smiled and said, Of course I want this relic, but I've never seen it before. Are you sure this is the right one? Chapter 2371 Taking the Treasure Lan Haishin turned around and looked at the old siren woman. Clearly, she had never seen the relic before either. The old siren woman quickly said, you don't have to worry, my prince. This is the relic of our race, the siren bottle. The holy bottle comes from a barren era. It was crafted from the materials harvested from ancient deified xenogenic creatures. It cannot be faked. Plus, only the siren's holy virgin blood can activate it. Check it out and you will see that it is real. After a brief pause, the old siren woman went on to say, This is the last item left behind by the holy virgin. Why would she lie to her son? Why would I doubt that this thing is the relic? Hansen asked in a hard voice. If you've never seen the relic before, how would you know? Lan Haishin asked. It doesn't look right. If you think that is the relic, then go ahead and take it. I will go elsewhere and look around, Hansen said. Then he moved to exit the hall. The old siren woman stopped him. My prince, the holy virgin is like you. Her blood isn't pure. Activating the relic will require the two of you to work together. One of you cannot be missing. Let's just have a look around first. Hansen commanded his blood Kirin to advance forward. The blood Kirin roared and headed toward one of the hall's side doors. The old siren woman was half deified, but attempting to stop the blood Kirin and Hansen was more than she dared. So she retreated. Lan Haishin looked at Hansen as he left the hall. She nibbled her lips and stepped closer to the altar. I'm not sure I can activate the holy bottle. The old siren woman stopped her and said, Do not be reckless, my lady. The holy bottle is our race's treasure, but the power it wields is unknown. Without pure virgin blood, it will be difficult to activate it. You might even get injured. That is why the last holy virgin didn't give the holy bottle straight to the prince. You cannot risk doing this alone. Lan Haishin wasn't an idiot. She was reasonable. She sighed and said, Fine. Let us go and look around, then. They left the hall. The Crystal Palace had many pavilions, and there were many rooms and statues. It looked like a real city made of crystal. It was so beautiful that simply walking through it was relaxing. Hansen made sure to move very carefully, but he didn't notice anything dangerous. There were no barred doors to be found across the entire Crystal Palace. He could enter any building he wanted, despite there being nothing valuable within them. The Crystal Palace was like a city that had been emptied of its people. It looked very pretty, yes, but it also looked very dead. Lan Haishin followed behind Han Senator as they walked around the Crystal Palace. She felt far safer. Inside the Crystal Palace, there were no dangerous restrictions. That proved that the last Holy Virgin only wanted Bai to have the Holy Bottle. There was nothing else of note. But all of a sudden, Hansen noticed a problem. He pointed to one corner of the Crystal Palace, and he said, What is this? Lan Haishin and the others followed Hansen's pointing finger and saw a crystal wall. 
Unlike the other crystal walls, however, this one had some green moss growing on it. Weird. Why is there moss here? Lan Haishin felt baffled as she walked towards the crystal wall. That moss had taken over the entire wall. It reached a long way up above the ground, and when Hansen looked closer, there were obvious signs that something had been climbing across it recently. There wasn't just a single set of tracks, either. It looked like something had passed through frequently. Lan Haishin and the old siren woman's faces changed. How is that possible? Has another creature taken residence in the Crystal Palace? Hansen observed the tracks, and all the while, his purple eye butterfly kept spinning. He soon learned that he was very familiar with those tracks. They had been left behind by the Crystal God Conk and Move Mountain Sea Conk. This confirms that those two were related to the Crystal Palace, but how did they leave this place? Hansen looked at the crystal wall some more, and he soon noticed something else. There was a very small, sand grain sized hole in the wall. Perhaps there was an imperfection in the building materials, or maybe it was a mistake in construction. Either way, a small hole had been left on the surface. The hole was narrower than a needle. An ordinary creature couldn't fit through it, but the Koches had been adept at shrinking their bodies. They would have had little difficulty coming and going as they pleased. Moss was growing on the wall because they had tracked it in when they came through the hole. Fortunately, they had already been killed by Han Sin and the little red bird. The group walked around the Crystal Palace some more, but they found no signs of other creatures living there. My prince, the last holy virgin wouldn't seek to hurt you. Let's just go and claim the holy bottle before something bad happens, the old siren woman said hurriedly. Hansen hesitated, then he thought of something. He didn't believe the danger was gone, but he had an idea. He nodded. Okay, we can give it a try then. Judging from what he had seen, the conches probably stumbled into the Crystal Palace by accident. They hadn't originated from the Crystal Palace. But Bai had cleared out all of the high-class Cynogeneics. It didn't make sense that a deified and a king-class Cynogeneic would still be hiding there. But if he considered how the two creatures had reached their ranks, that might explain it. Maybe the conches weren't originally deified and king-class. For some reason, they became deified and king-class during their time inside the Crystal Palace. But from the barren nature of the place, it seemed that the only thing inside Crystal Palace capable of having such an effect was the Siren Bottle. If the conches leveled up because of the Siren Bottle, Hansen thought about it, and his heart started to race. The bottle had made a Xenogeneic deified. Every deified elite would want something like this. Because of that, Hansen changed his mind. He wanted to see if he could use the siren bottle for himself. With a chance of securing such a massive windfall, it was worth taking a large risk. Plus, the little red bird was present. That should mitigate whatever risk there might be. Seeing that Hansen was finally willing to return to the holy bottle, the old siren woman hastily guided him back. Soon after, everyone gathered back in the hall. The siren bottle still sat silently atop the altar. The old siren woman reminded them, Holy Virgin, you and the prince should ascend to the platform and bleed a drop of your blood into the holy bottle. If it is activated, the bottle will select its master. After that, she looked at Hansen and said, My prince, the blood power from both of you will melt into the holy bottle. The chance of ownership will be 50-50. Regardless of who obtains the bottle, I hope we can all cooperate. Of course. Hansen nodded, and then he walked towards the altar alongside Lan Haishin. The two of them moved cautiously, but nothing happened on their way. Hansen and Lan Haishin reached the platform safely. They looked at each other. Lan Haishin gritted her teeth, extended a finger, and let a drop of blood fall into the siren bottle. Hansen looked into the bottle and saw the familiar, blurry rainbow color. He couldn't see anything else. After Lan Haishin's droplet of blood fell in, the liquid disappeared into the rainbow as if nothing had happened. Hansen hesitated. He cast his original Water King body, then put a drop of water into the bottle. Hansen's water fell straight into the siren bottle, and then the siren bottle started to shake like mad. The blurry rainbow swirled like a whirlpool, and it looked as if it would erupt at any second. Chapter 2372 Playoff While the rainbow raged the bottle, the bottle itself started to float. Hansen's face paled. A bad feeling suddenly washed over him. He hastily backed away from the altar and returned to the blood kirin. Lan Haishin was still staring at that shining siren bottle. Not recognizing the danger rising before her, she was still waiting for the siren bottle to select its master. 
When the other sirens saw that the siren bottle had been activated, they knelt and began to bow before it. They also mumbled words Hansen didn't understand. He assumed it was the language of the siren. Boom. The siren bottle's rainbow light exploded out. The bottle's halo expanded, looking like a pillar of light reaching for the top of the crystal palace. After the blurry rainbow touched the crystal palace's ceiling, it began to spread. It started to seep all across the crystal palace. The entire structure started to shine brightly, as if the whole thing had been doused in the morning light. The altar's secret substance chain was affected by the blurry rainbow, too. It started to shine as well. Many magical spells began to play across the top of the altar. Lin Haishin finally noticed that something was wrong. They all turned to look at Han Sr. Lan Haishin abandoned the altar to ask Han Sen. Bai Yi, what is this? You are asking me? How am I supposed to know? I told you earlier that there was a problem with this thing, but you guys chose to ignore the warning. Hansen wanted to leave the Crystal Palace, but the main door had been barred by rainbow-colored light. Hansen tried to open it a few times, but each attempt ended with him being tossed back by the power of those rainbows. Although the light fountained everywhere, it didn't hurt anyone. But Hansen was unable to go out, and so he was still stuck there with the rest of them. You and your mother planned this so you could trick us, the old siren woman screamed, pointing at Han Sr. Hansen ignored her. She was obviously a moron and there was no point in trying to understand her. The siren couldn't leave the hall. The old siren woman pointed at Hansen and said, Grab him. I don't believe that B asterisk TCH would leave her son behind. Hansen stared at the idiotic old siren woman for a long moment. Are you having a stroke or something? The siren still surrounded Hansen, though, and he didn't know what they were thinking. The half-deified old woman was their strongest member. The others were all king class. Hansen's blood Kirin had half deified powers. He didn't understand how the old siren woman could have thought that command was a good idea. The siren looked a little hesitant, though. They surrounded Hansen, but they made no attempt to attack him. Take him. That is the only way we will survive, the old siren woman screamed. She lifted her coral staff and gathered up a watery power. It became a water dragon that shot out towards the blood Kirin. The other sirens moved to help the old siren woman. They wanted to take Hansen down together. The blood Kirin had a very short fuse. It spat out some blood air that destroyed the old siren woman's water dragon, then it activated its blood area and stepped forward to attack the sirens that surrounded them. Hansen placed Lily on the blood Kirin's back, then touched the blood Kirin's head. He shouted, there's no need to attack them. She's the problem. The siren were given a shock. Hansen was indicating the old woman. The old siren woman coldly grunted. Even now, you still try to divide us? You were evil. We were blind and unable to tell you were this evil. You better tell us what conspiracy you and that be asterisk TCH cooked up. Don't be angry with us that we're about to harm a member of our own family. After that, the old siren woman used her staff against the blood Karen. The blood Karen roared in return and ran forward to fight the old siren woman. The old siren woman couldn't compete against the blood Karen, though. The area she created wasn't enough to block the pervasive blood area unleashed by the blood Kirin. She was at an immediate disadvantage. What are you waiting for? Take them down. This is our only chance of living, the old siren woman screamed. The siren kings moved forward to fight, but Lan Haishin's face looked hesitant. Lan Haishin, think about this. Who was the one that allowed you to open the relic? Who was the one that brought you here? Who was the one that said the bottle was the relic? Who was the one that provoked this fight? Hansen shouted to Lan Haishin. His hands clutched the head of the Blood Kirin. He wasn't going to allow the Blood Kirin to attack anyone aside from the old Siren Woman. Hansen wasn't trying to be nice by sparing their lives. Instead, he was reasonably confident that the old Siren Woman wanted him to kill all the Siren there. This ploy was way too obvious. The old Siren Woman knew that they would be unable to fight Hansen and the Blood Kirin, so she was being stubborn. Hansen didn't believe that this half-deified woman had survived the destruction of her race while remaining this stupid. That was, unless there was something she wanted. If the old siren woman really wanted to kill Hansen, she would have attacked Hansen herself. But her target was the Blood Kirin. This decision drove the Blood Kirin's bloodlust to even greater heights. The whole of the extreme king knew that the Blood Kirin was a cruel and ill-tempered beast. Otherwise, it wouldn't have murdered someone in King's Garden. The old siren woman's behavior wasn't natural. 
Even if she convinced the Siren to fight, they still wouldn't be able to defeat Han Sen and the Blood Kirin. At the very best, they might achieve a draw. And that wouldn't be a very good result for the Siren. The only possibility was that the old Siren woman wanted to do harm to the Siren as a whole. It wasn't about him exclusively. Hansen didn't want to be used as a tool to kill the Siren. That was why he held the Blood Kirin's head to keep it from killing them. But the Blood Kirin's temper was too cruel. Hansen couldn't control it. The Blood Kirin kept being provoked by the old Siren woman, and because of this, the blood air got scarier and scarier. The creature couldn't hold in its emotions. Arc. The Blood Kirin landed a blow on the old Siren woman. Her body flew away and crashed into one of the palace's crystal walls. She coughed up some blood. Holy virgin, do you not understand? If we don't kill the survive, the siren will all be murdered here and now. Bai Yi and his B asterisk TCH mother are going to ruin our race. The old siren woman was covered in blood. Her hair was messed up, and it looked as if she was on the verge of crying. The blood Kirin didn't hesitate, though. It roared and went toward the old siren woman. Hansen couldn't stop it. Stop, Lan Haishin shouted. The Siren Kings moved to fight Han Sen and the Blood Kirin, too. They wanted to stop the Blood Kirin's advance. Chapter 2373, Killing Han Sen's eyes looked cold. He knew that the old woman had successfully provoked the other sirens. Lan Haishin, I hope you don't regret your decision, Hansen said in an emotionless voice. He let go of the Blood Kirin's head, then pulled out the Thunder God Spike and Ghost Teeth Knife that were attached to his waist. The blood Karen roared and leaped at the old siren woman. The blood air glowed with a deep scarlet light. It swept forward, looking like it was going to rip the old siren woman in half. Lan Haishin and a few of the other siren kings came forward in an attempt to stop Han Sr. I only want her. This has nothing to do with any of the rest of you. Anyone who tries to stop me will forfeit their life. Hansen said grimly. It didn't look like he was going to fall back. There was another way that Hansen could have resolved this situation, but the direct approach would be much faster. He had no interest in making sacrifices for the good of the sirens, or in being held responsible for their mistakes and stupidity. Hansen slashed and thrust, and the area around him turned into a chaotic blur of knife airs and sword lights. He cut off the siren kings while the blood Karen surged after the old siren woman. The old siren woman screamed, I will use the siren sacrifice to seal them. You guys look for an opening to attack them. Elder. No. The sirens were all in shock. The old siren woman gathered herself up bravely. A blue water light spread out like blooming flowers as a scary presence began to rise within her. A siren-shaped shadow landed on her, and her presence suddenly erupted like a volcano. The blue water light slid out of the old siren woman and became blue tentacles that wrapped around the blood kirin. The blood kirin broke the tentacles but more were fast approaching. They managed to trap Hansen and the Blood Kirin in their knotted grasp. Elder, why are you doing this? Lan Haishin looked pale. She knew exactly what the old Siren Woman was doing. The other Sirens were feeling much the same way. They knew that using Siren's sacrifice meant spending one's life. The old Siren Woman was laying down her life, and she obviously didn't mean to bring them harm. Many of the Sirens looked at Hansen and the Blood Kirin with gut-wrenching hatred. After all, it was Han Sin and the Blood Kirin that had pushed her to throw away her life and cast Siren Sacrifice. Han Sin knew that his last chance of getting through to them had disappeared. The old Siren Woman's move had been cruelly effective. No matter what he said, the other Sirens would no longer trust him. It doesn't matter anyway. It's not my job to preserve the lives of these idiots. If they want to die this badly, then not even a saint could stop them. I am just Han Sr., Hansen calmly looked at the old siren woman. He pushed against the blue light tentacles, and the brave-looking old siren woman gave him a mocking smile. This time, Lan Haishin didn't need to give the order for the sirens to attack the blood Kirin and Han Senator. The sirens rushed forward to kill them the moment that the old siren woman trapped them. As you wish, Hansen murmured to himself. He used his original Water King body's area in the Sea Dragon area. Many areas collided within the palace. Hansen pulled out his knife, and the blood Kirin let out a thunderous roar. He ripped through the blue light tentacles to charge at the old siren woman. Knives and swords flickered all around them as the sirens attacked Hansen and the blood Kirin furiously. The siren kings were filled with bloodlust, and Hansen had to deal with them and fight through the tentacles at the same time. 
The situation was a very dire and dangerous one. The sirens tried their best, and the old siren woman made sure to look as sad and brave as possible. She was spending her own life force to sustain the demonic siren shadows, and it looked as if her light was about to fail. She was still struggling to hold on, though. All seven of her holes were bleeding. Her hair had turned white, and it looked as if she was dying. Suddenly, the old siren woman coughed up some blood. Her body was shaking, and it looked as if she was about to keel over. Elder, Lan Haishin shouted. Forget about me. I deserve to die. I cannot allow the siren to be destroyed right before my eyes. I will protect the siren and their blood, even if it costs me my life, the old siren woman screamed. The blue light exploded again in even greater volume. It looked like she had poured all of her remaining life force into this last blast. The siren's eyes were red as they were filled with anger and grief. They used 120% of their power. They wanted to use this final chance to take out Hansen and the Blood Kirin. Lan Haishin, you can still come back if you stop this now. Hansen said from atop the Blood Kirin. He looked directly at Lan Haishin. Lily was sitting behind Han Sen and holding tight to his waist. This fight was out of her league. If not for Han Sen, the streams of power would already have torn her apart. Why must you and your mother bring harm to the sirens? Even if we did something bad to you guys, you still have siren blood inside you. Can you not let go of the hatred in your hearts? Why must you try to kill us? Lan Haishin looked sad as she spoke. I told you. This is none of my business. She's the one who set you guys up. Hansen pointed at the old siren woman as he spoke. Bai, why are you still talking like this? Do you think we're idiots or something? A siren king bellowed. Today, I will kill you on behalf of the elder. Another siren king roared. Kill him. I have given you guys three chances. What happens now is on you. Hansen lifted his weapon and thrust it forward. Suddenly, the entire hall was webbed with knife silks. They appeared everywhere, and they were pressing forward. Blurk. Fresh blood splattered throughout the palace. The knife silks killed the sirens and sliced through the blue light tentacles. Limbs and blood were flying through the air, and suddenly, the whole hall was turned red. Everyone in the hall, aside from Hansen, Lily, the blood Kirin, Lan Haishin, Bauer, and the old siren woman, had been killed. The siren kings had all been dismembered. Some of the siren kings were still breathing, but having lost their limbs, they could only scream hoarsely as they wallowed in their own blood. Lan Haishin's eyes widened, and she just stood there. She looked terrified, hopeless, disbelieving. A myriad of emotions flickered across her face. You. Lan Haishin's body was trembling as she pointed at Han Senator. She hadn't expected this to be the end. She hadn't expected Hansen to be so strong. I did as you wished. Are you happy now? Hansen ignored Lan Haishin and spoke to the old siren woman. Ha ha. I can see now that you truly are of that be asterisk TCH's blood. Your hearts are deep, but it doesn't make a difference, even if you did see through my plan. I still played you, the old siren woman cackled. She didn't look sad, and her dying body suddenly looked very alive. Lan Haishin stared at the old siren woman. She couldn't believe her eyes. The siren blood on the ground began to move. It raced to the altar and died the altar red. Chapter 2374 Holy Bottle Liquid. Elder, why? Lan Haishin looked at the old siren woman with utter disbelief. Her voice trembled. Why? The old siren woman's face was twisted. She gritted her teeth and said, I want to know why too. I want to know why I am so talented, and yet, not a single siren was able to appreciate my accomplishments. Is it because I don't have the blood of the Holy Virgin? Is that why that be asterisk TCH became the Holy Virgin instead? If a traitor like that was able to become the Holy Virgin, why couldn't I? I waited many years for that be asterisk TCH to die, but they let you, a girl who didn't even have pure blood, become the Holy Virgin instead. I want to know why they never considered giving me the chance. I'm so smart. No one amongst the siren could do the things that I've done. But just because I don't have a drop of the Holy Virgin's blood, I have to be considered a mere commoner? In this world, there's no point in asking why. Things only belong to you if you fight for them. The old siren woman gave a twisted laugh. Now, I finally have this chance. If the sirens aren't willing to accept me, then I will destroy this entire race. I will offer my blood to the siren bottle and conjure a new race, one which will worship me as their alpha. Because of that, you are willing to kill off the last of our kind? 
Lan Haishin looked very sad. They're nothing. As long as I have the siren bottle, I can be deified. I can create a race of my own. The old siren woman sounded a little crazy. You don't have the holy virgin blood. You cannot control the siren bottle. All you have done is for nothing. Lan Haishin looked unspeakably sad. The old siren woman laughed. You will just have to thank that B asterisk TCH then. She wanted her hybrid son to claim the holy bottle. She built this crystal palace and the blood altar here and made a deal with you. She did all of this for his benefit. She only used you for your blood. With this altar, the siren blood, and the refinement of the holy bottle, I can control it. Even without the holy virgin's blood. I suffered much humiliation when I was young, but I sided with that B asterisk TCH. I did everything I could to earn her trust. I almost died multiple times during my service to her. Even my son died for her. I sacrificed so much to gain her faith. Now, I'm the only one who can wield this technique. That be asterisk TCH would have never imagined I was scheming to betray her. She never knew I was the one that killed her. She couldn't even tell her secret to her hybrid son. Now, everything belongs to me. I will be the next race's alpha. After saying this, the old siren woman laughed like mad. She seemed utterly self-assured. You seem to have forgotten I'm still here. Hansen looked at that old siren woman with pride. The old siren woman's smile vanished as she looked at Hans Sr. You aren't bad. You must be as devious as that B asterisk TCH to have hidden things for so long. Your own plan was decent, but you were still too young, and you ended up killing all the siren. What a shame. Now, the blood altars process has begun, and the holy bottle is in the midst of being refined. Although it cannot be fully used yet, I only need to borrow a little of its power to kill both you and the blood Kieran. I don't believe that you are completely without holy virgin blood. How can you use the holly bottle's power without it? Hansen asked. Hansen had guessed the old siren woman's plan a while ago, but he hadn't killed her yet because he wanted the siren bottle, as well. He had the same problem as the old siren woman. He had the original water king body, but he didn't have the holy virgin blood. The holy bottle wouldn't accept him as its master. And this wasn't just because Hansen had replaced Bai Yi, either. Even Bai Yi's mother didn't believe the young prince would be able to make use of the bottle. So, she set up the blood altar. She needed a blood sacrifice so that Bai Yi could control the siren bottle. But that should still be impossible for Hans Sr. Hansen wanted to know the old siren woman's plan. She must have some method for controlling the siren bottle. So, he didn't yet strike her down. It is okay. Soon, you will believe. I'm going to use both of you hybrids as a sacrifice. Then, I will be able to control the siren bottle and create a race of my own. I will be the alpha and leader of it, the old siren woman said. She walked towards the altar and picked up the siren bottle. Obsession was etched deep into the lines of her face. Lan Haishin used her area power in a bid to stop the old woman, but as soon as Lan Haishin moved on to the altar, the altar's rainbow light bounced her back. She was unable to access that zone. The old siren woman lifted the bottle and laughed. That cheapy asterisk TCH wasn't at my level, but she was still better than the two of you. You two hybrids will die today. Hansen looked at the old siren woman with interest and said, You're going to kill me? Aren't you afraid that the extreme king will hunt you down? The old siren woman grinned and looked at him with disdain. I watched Bai E grow up. Aside from that B asterisk TCH, no one else understood him more than I. You are not Bai. I don't know how you did what you did. Perhaps it was a similar skill to consume? But regardless, your ability to open the crystal palace door proves that you refined the hybrid Bai Yi's blood. I get your blood and give you to King Bai. He will appreciate that, I think. I can get the siren bottle and receive King Bai's reward. I must say, God seems to be on my side. Ha ha. Lan Haishin looked at Hansen with proper shock. She had never realized the Bai Yi in front of her was a fake. But she never thought someone would be brave enough to disguise themselves as a prince of the extreme king, either. Instead of denying the accusation, Hansen admitted it. He stood silently and watched the old siren woman. Her hands were glowing. Power was coming out of her hands and flowing into the siren bottle. The siren bottle's wings were like the faces of siren women. They looked alive. Their eyes shone with light, and blue waves rippled across them. They made sad sniffling noises like an instrument was playing. Not long after, a water drop arose inside the bottle. 
The old siren woman happily grabbed the drop and put it into her mouth. Her body began to glow and change. Rainbow color light rinsed over her, and the old siren woman's tree bark-like face changed. Her age and wrinkles disappeared, and she became an 18-year-old girl with skin that was smooth and white. Her fish scales looked transparent and crystal, and they glowed with rainbow light. Her entire body had been completely renewed, and her presence changed along with it. Chapter 2375 Killing the Siren Elder The crystal god Conk became deified because of that siren bottle. Hansen looked at the siren elder. She didn't look old anymore. It looked as if she had returned to being a young woman. The siren elder swung her fishtail, and waves surged out behind her as she swam away from the blood altar and went toward Han Sin and Lan Haishin. She laughed haughtily. As long as I possess the holy bottle, anything I desire is within my grasp. After that, the siren elder waved her hand. A rainbow light fired at Han Sin and Lan Haishin. Her powers were now very different than her original abilities, and her attack was similar to the blurry rainbow lights that were visible inside the siren bottle. The blurry rainbow lights came down, transforming into crystal bottles around Hansen and the others to trap them. Hansen had seen the crystal god Konk use an almost identical power, and now he knew for sure that the power had come from the siren bottle. But the siren elder was weaker than the crystal god Konk had been. She generated a substance chain power but it was very weak. It wasn't solid like the crystal god conk substance chains. It looks like she can't really control the power of the siren bottle, but how did the crystal god conk wield the siren bottle's power so well? It couldn't have activated the siren bottle, and it didn't have the siren blood necessary to perform the sacrifice, either, Hansen thought to himself. Lan Haishin's power struck the crystal bottle, but the attempt was futile. Her attack struck the surface of the bottle with king-class power, but it wasn't enough to even rattle it on the spot. Haha, uh -huh. it is useless. This is the siren bottle's power. Allow me to take your blood so that I may use it on the siren bottle. When I control it in its entirety, I will achieve even more power, and then I can start my own race that will exist all across the universe. I will become an alpha. A maniacal grin split the siren elder's face, and the rainbow colors that enshrouded her became even brighter. The glass bottle grew smaller as the siren elder applied pressure to it. She wanted to squash the people inside it. Little Red Bird Hansen understood how the siren elder was making use of the siren bottle, but he didn't hesitate to summon the little red bird. The little red bird fluttered over to Bauer's shoulder, then it hopped onto Hansen's finger and chirped at him. We're about done here. Get rid of this old hag, but leave her final few breaths to me. I want to finish her off myself, Hansen commanded the little red bird. The siren elder looked as if she had heard a funny joke, and she laughed. This isn't the end yet, and you are already going crazy. Boom. The words had barely left the siren elder's mouth when the little red bird took flight. Flames began to lick around her body as she rose from Han Sen's finger. Suddenly, the little red bird turned into a gold fire phoenix. The phoenix wings give a couple of powerful beats, raising swathes of fire that charred the walls of the glass bottle. The substance chains that composed the crystal walls were like paper. The flames danced across them, and they were incinerated into ashes in a flash. It looks like the Siren Elder's power is far inferior to the crystal god Cox. This is like a fake deified's power, Hansen thought to himself. De deified Xenogeneic. No. Impossible. The Siren Elder's eyes were wide, filled with utter disbelief at what she saw. Lan Haishin couldn't believe it, either. She stared in amazement at the little red bird that had turned into a fire phoenix. The two sirens were familiar with the little red bird already, as Bauer played with the creature every day, and she especially liked to bully it. Lan Haishin sometimes felt sorry for the little thing, but it had never seemed to mind getting bullied by Bauer. It continued to follow her at all times. That little red bird was actually a deified xenogeneic. The thought was mind-boggling, but the truth couldn't be denied. The fire phoenix that the little red bird had turned into was now flying towards the old siren woman. And when it reached her, it spat out a golden fireball. The siren elder screamed, her voice thrumming weirdly around them. Her body was shining, and that light became a glass bottle that tried to encase the little red bird. But it turned to dust the instant it came close to those fires. The flames lashed wildly towards the siren elder. The siren elder was unable to dodge. 
She gathered up her angelic god light to block the attacks with her hands, but when her hands touched the fire, they started to burn. And then, her whole body was aflame. Arg, no. This is impossible. I want to be an alpha. I want to receive this holy bottle. The siren elder screamed angrily as the cruel fire consumed her. Not long after, her burned body was turned to ash. That wasn't a real deified power, huh? It looks like her methods were riddled with flaws. Bai Yi and Lan Haishin's blood have to be combined to control the siren bottle. Hansen pulled out his ghost teeth knife. He walked forward and cut off the dying siren elder's head. Mutant Xenogeneic King hunted. Siren Lady. Mutant Xenogeneic Gene found. After Hansen killed the siren elder, the fire continued to burn. The siren elder's body turned into ash. A blue gem that must have been her Xenogeneic Gene sat amidst the gray. But I didn't get her beast soul. Hansen grabbed the gem and held it in the palm of his hand. Hansen placed the blue gem into his chest pocket, then approached the altar. Ping. Hansen tried going to the altar, but the blurry rainbow stopped him short. Hansen frowned. He simulated the Siren Elder, but he still couldn't access the altar. Lan Haishin bit her lips and said, It looks like you have wasted your efforts here. You won't be able to get the holy bottle, after all. Hansen ignored her. She looked at the siren bottle for a while and suddenly said, It is you, right? The siren's final holy virgin, by Yi's mom? You are a clever kid. A woman's voice came out of the siren bottle. The blurry rainbow in the bottle came into focus, turning into a beautiful siren woman who hung at the entrance. She had white ears and white scales. Her skin looked like jade, and it was even smoother than Han Sen's jade skin. Her hair was long and black, and it reached down to her waist. Her eyes were like obsidian. Her face was very attractive, and a soft smile warmed her expression. Ho! Oh. Holy Virgin! Lan Haishin stared at the woman by the siren bottle in shock. She didn't know how to compose herself at that moment. All the things she thought could never happen had transpired in such an incredibly short time. Lan Haishin felt like her entire lifetime hadn't contained as many unexpected twists as the last ten minutes.